that for sure for both you and I, I know. Yeah, a unique opportunity this year. Challenging at times, but yet rewarding at the end. Hit hard, but Mumi is right there for it. And now there's two down. And the Spartan fans are on their feet, all holding up a finger, saying we are number one. And they are one out away of claiming that right here as Jacob Wolver is the last chance here for the Dragons. And they're just making sure this, I think making sure the uh, he is the correct batter. And it is, it is Wolver. That's what I've got on my shot. Yep, I'm not yep. sure why they thought anything different, but so Wolver steps in. Last chance here for the Dragons. Lindmark trying to finish it off here in Iowa City. The pitch, strike call, nothing and one. The pitch, that did not miss by much. One ball and one strike. Wolver he is hitless today. Curve ball, and he will end that drought with a base hit to left. And we play on as Risley heads over to third. So first hit of the day for Wolver, and that brings up Connor Canny, who's had a big day at the plate. Three hits, a single in the second, triple in the fourth, and double in the fifth. Well, think about this. Connor Canny, a single in the second, a double in the fifth, and a triple in the fourth. He's one hit away from hitting the cycle. And my guess is he probably knows that. He might be trying <laughs> to go for it right here. Takes the first one outside, 1-0. One oh. Pleasant Valley looking to claim their first title in baseball in school history. Pretty relaxed with a 14-5 lead. Dropping one in there is Lindmark. One and one, two strikes away. Fourteen hit barrage by Pleasant Valley and here's a pop-up Who's gonna take it? Misek's got it and Pleasant Valley has claimed the title their first one in baseball The top seed coming in and they rode that all the way to a title game. Dominating Johnston here today, 14 to 5, and winning the Class 4A championship. Now, things really blew open for them in the fourth inning, Allen. They put six up, they kept the pressure on with another six in the fifth, had a chance to end it after five, actually. And it got to the seventh where they finished Johnston off 14 to 5. Yeah, big, uh, big uh, opportunity for Pleasant Valley today, as you mentioned, in the fourth and the fifth, Rick, where they came through with a bunch of runs. And, you know, the game was tied at 2 2 at one point. Looked like uh, uh, Johnston came back in the fourth inning and scored a run to get up 3 2. And then all of a sudden, here comes Pleasant Valley. And that offense finally got going in this, in this tournament. And they were able to get it done here in this championship game. We'll take a break and wrap things up from Iowa City. This is the High V Heat Championship Network.
obsessively, relentlessly at your service. To me, it means being there 24-7, rain or shine, during storms, after storms. Being a first responder to the community, to my customers. Being there to get the customers back on and to see the smiles on their face. To provide the kind of reliability that we can hold our heads high about. And we want to keep our customers safe. Safety's first around here. And that's rewarding. When it comes to business, lessons learned along the way build strength. The ability to adapt and maintain continuity under any circumstances can make all the difference. Today's business demands a powerful broadband network with speed and capacity to respond to immediate challenges while building for the future. Being prepared with the infrastructure and technology to fuel what comes next has never mattered more. Be ready for tomorrow. Gigabit Plus Enterprise Level Solutions from Mediacom Business. Catch all the 2021 Iowa Barnstormer home games exclusively on MC22, your local sports programming leader. Handshakes going around as Pleasant Valley takes the title over Johnston 14 to 5. So Johnston unable to defend. And for the first time in school history, the Spartans are champs in baseball. Let's take a look at our Casey's player of the game. And we are going to go with Ryan Mooney. Three for four, couple of doubles, two run scores, three RBIs, a diving catch. And the All-Stater comes up with our Casey's player of the game in the 4A championship. And congratulations to him. Well-deserved honor. And time now for the lead tool. Most valuable player of the tournament award. This is always so tough, Alan, to, to pick one player out. You could go two or three different ways, but we'll show you who we got here coming up. And we're going to go back to Carol and Jack Pettit. Yeah, you look at Jack Pettit from Van Meter, 7 for 9 in the tournament with 5 RBI. He was 1-0 pitching, 9 innings pitch, 4 earned runs, and had 8 hits. I mean, he absolutely had an outstanding tournament for the Bulldogs. And uh, Jack Pettit is the lead tool tournament most valuable player presented by Iowa B. Yeah, he did it both offensively and then, of course, his stellar pitching as well. And you combine all of that, and congratulations to him. But today's day goes to Pleasant Valley as they win it 14-5. to Marion takes the 3A title, so two schools that have never won a uh, championship win two here this afternoon. And let's take a look at our final stats presented by EMC Insurance. Uh, your final stats here today, if you look, 11 strikeouts for Pleasant Valley, only five for Johnston, seven walks to four, and then uh, 14 hits to 10. But really what it came down to is uh, not necessarily so much left on base or whatever. It was stringing the hits together that Pleasant Valley did in the fourth and fifth innings that really made a difference in this one. Your stats here today presented by EMC. Count on EMC. Well, congratulations to Pleasant Valley, Marion earlier today, and to all of our viewers, a big thank you for a week long of coverage here. And we appreciate you tuning in on our YouTube channel, on our stream, and of course on our network stations around the state. It's Pleasant Valley, the 4A champions. For all of our crew, Jeff Pearson, Todd Studer, Joe Hammond, Travis Porterfield, our director, producer, and of course, Alan DeBolt. I'm Rick Silvestrini. Thank you for watching. This is the High B Championship Network.
When technology connects virtually everything, protecting business data is more critical than ever. Assets you've worked so hard to create, and customer information that must remain private. Mediacom Business Broadband offers unmatched network security, backed by unwavering support, safeguarding the foundation on which business is built. Revolutionize your business with Mediacom. This week at Iowa's number one vacation destination, Okaboji. Okoboji this week, all summer long, and it's only on MC22. Leader, Mediacom is winning awards across the U.S., keeping you connected, keeping you safe, rising to the challenge, challenging the limits. Thanks to our award-winning employees, never settling, never backing down, always planning ahead, and always getting better. Mediacom is proud to be named 2021 U.S. Best Managed Company by Deloitte and The Wall Street Journal. You're watching MC22. We have three games left in the regular season. Iowa is still in the hunt to claim a spot in the playoffs. Every game is a must win, especially tonight against Bismarck. The Barnstormers and Bucks take the field next on MC22. It's a big game with playoff implications as the Iowa Barnstormers, losers of their last three, take on a Bismarck team that's won two of their last three, coming off a 41-30 win over Green Bay last week. Hello, everyone. Larry Morgan along with Brent. Big play, Curve. And for the Barnstormers tonight, how important is this game, Brent? I mean, this game is this is the, almost the end-all, be-all. You know, this is, uh, I think it's about a four-way tie down at the bottom, and Barnstorm is on the bottom half of that, and they have to win tonight to kind of have that tiebreaker there, uh, having two falls at the bottom, uh, beating Bismarck twice. I'm sure that'll help them out a whole lot here heading into the playoffs. Absolutely. In fact, the Bucks feel that with another win, they'll be at eight wins, and they're in for sure. So for Iowa, so important tonight. Now, for the Barnstormers, turnovers have really been an issue in the last three straight losses. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems that there was a lot of uh, mishandling of the ball, you know, early on with the quarterback and center exchanges there and, you know, throwing an interception late at the end of the uh, half there. I mean, some of those you, you can kind of make up for, right? But they got to play smarter uh, this game for sure. Meanwhile, the Bucks' whole defense is predicated on the fact that they want three stops the game they feel if they get those, they can win. Let's take a look at our spotlight players. Barnstormers coming off a bye week prior to that, a 34-26 lost, but there was really one bright spot in that game. That was on the defense. That was Jalen Moore. Yeah, he was all over the field. Very active. He had uh, the eight tackles and the one interception. And I mean, I'm sure that's a big part of the reason <laughs> they want him to be the spotlight guy, right? To kind of fly around and hopefully lead this team a little bit. And Bismarck's had a really good year considering they are on their count of one, two, three, four, five, fifth starting quarterback, Kenyatta Allen. He's played in Poland. He's played in Germany. He's played in England, and now he's playing in Bismarck, North Dakota. He's add more and more into his resume, it looks like. Sounds like the guy likes to travel a lot. Uh, I know Coach talked about his poise in the pocket, and I'm sure playing in all of those different places helped with that a lot. Meeting number three between these two teams, when they met in late May here, there were seven lean changes before the Barnstormers prevailed 49-33. But then they played again June the 12th in Bismarck. Final was the Bucks 53, the Barnstormers 22. What happened to Iowa that night? 
Uh, I think Joe Stacy said it best. He didn't get off the bus. You know, nobody came prepared, ready to play that game. And if you don't show up, most of the time you'll be the odd man out that night. Absolutely. So, again, trying to snap a three-game losing streak. The Barnstormers certainly plan to show up tonight, but so do the Bismarck Bucks coming off a nine-and-a-half-hour bus ride to get to Des Moines. Iowa and Bismarck next on MC22. Mediacom is winning awards across the U.S., keeping you connected, keeping you safe, rising to the challenge, challenging the limits. Thanks to our award-winning employees, never settling, never backing down, always planning ahead, and always getting better. Mediacom is proud to be named 2021 U.S. Best Managed Company by Deloitte and Wall Street Journal. Each year, one in six Americans get sick due to a foodborne illness. People can get food poisoning from eating hot food that isn't kept hot, cold food that isn't kept cold, or old food that should be thrown out. If you get sick from eating food made outside your home, report that illness by calling 844-IOWA-SICK. Feeling queasy? Call. It's easy. 844-IOWA-SIC. 844-IOWA-SICK. Catch all the 2021 Iowa Barnstormer home games exclusively on MC22, your local sports programming leader. Welcome back to Wells Fargo Arena. Iowa's four and five. They've lost three in a row. Bismarck seven and six. They've won two out of three. They meet for just the fifth time in the brief two-year history of the Bismarck Bucks in the IFL. Iowa leads the series three to one. But as we mentioned, Bismarck prevailed in the last meeting. Rod Miller, who went to school in Des Moines at Drake University, played for the Bulldogs in 88 and 89, is the head coach for Bismarck. And this man has been around. He has coached in six different indoor football leagues and also coached in the China Arena Football League. And here's a guy who's been around as well. 33 years of indoor football for both for the uh, Drake, for the, uh, excuse me, for the uh, Barnstorber coach Les Moss. As a head coach, 14 years, 162 victories, 13 championship games, five titles on his resume. And tonight, he is the head coach for the 251st game of his career. Cody Barber will kick off for the Bismarck Bucks. He's one of four ex-Barnstormers on the roster for Bismarck, and he kicks it out of play. Jawan Williams is back to return, had there been a return, and right away have a little confrontation as the Barnstormer offense will come on the field. It'll start at the five yard line. Daquan Neal, the quarterback for the Barnstormers, has hit 53% of his passes this year, 1,438 yards. Thrown for 24 touchdowns, has been intercepted six times after being intercepted only two times all of last season. And the ball, of course, since it was not returned, will start at the 20 yard line. And that's where the Barnstormers with good field position will get things started. Elad Cavallo is the running back. All the receivers go right. The throw is to the right, and it's complete to Carrington Thompson Sr., who has a good game and brings up a first down on the very first play from scrimmage. If they mark it there, they're actually going to mark it for a gain of eight. Offensively, this is the way the Barnstormers start with, we mentioned Neal and Cavallo. Thompson, Person, and Jawan Williams are the wide receivers. DJ Loving, Chris, uh, Kurt Kelly, and Stephen Rousey, who was hurt and didn't play much two games ago, is back, and that should help anchor the offensive line. Playoff fake to Williams. Neal will keep, and Neal will be brought down at the 21-yard line. He gains a yard, and that'll bring up a third and one call. Defensively, this is the way the Bismarck Bucks line up, and the guy to keep your eye on, who they really build their defense around, is the man right at the top, Malik Duncan, number two. Good ball hawking receiving core in the defensive area in Hendrick, Carter, and Codlin. Jackson, an outstanding linebacker, leads the team in tackles, 
and Keith Ross and Moa up front can be very tough. Not as big as some defensive lines, but nevertheless, they're very quick and active. Third and one, Neal trying to plunge for the first down, and his forward progress will give him the first down, down to the 19-yard line. And keeps the leg turning here. Looks like the Balu gave him a little extra push to push him right over there for their first down. Neal, this year, rushing for 417 yards. That's an average of six yards a carry almost. He is number two in the league in rushing and number two in the league in passing. Yeah, they definitely need him to have a big game today to keep him in that playoff hunt. That's right, and for him to do that, he definitely needs some good protection, which was lacking two weeks ago in the Barnstormers' loss by a score of 34-26 to Green Bay. Play action fake, Cavallo rushes on, throw is right through the hands of the intended receiver, Carrington Thompson Sr. Man, he had him open, he had him in the red zone, and Thompson couldn't hang on. Yeah, I know Thompson wants that one back. That's a, that's a great pass uh, by Neal to him. It's a little bit behind him, had to readjust, but you know, the old saying, if it touches both of your gloves, you ought to be able to pull it in. So, I know Thompson will come on a lot harder this next play. And Thompson Sr., by the way, has Thompson Jr. in the crowd tonight, seeing him in Des Moines for the first time this year. A little extra motivation for him. Tonight. Absolutely. Had him out in pregame warm-up. Very proud of his young man. And that pass is incomplete. Good defensive play turned in by the defensive back Javon Codlin on the intended receiver. He made that hit immediately. Make it Harper. You know, Coach talked a lot about them being opportunistic, and I know the Barnstorm wish they had that last pass back, and it's a great break up there by Harper. Right on, drove, stuck that plant leg in the ground and drove to, to break up that pass there, making it a long third down. Harper just joined Bismarck Bucks, was not even on the roster prior to the game. Neal is back, Neal has time, Neal has a receiver, he has a touchdown, complete to Dayton Person, and the Barnstormers score on their first possession to take a 6 to nothing lead. It's a great opening drive there. Quan Neal sits back in the pocket and delivers a, a very nice strike. Looks like no pressure up front, makes it a whole lot easier for Neal to see it opened up in the middle and throws a very, very nice ball there, Parson. A 19-yard touchdown strike as Neal has thrown his 25th touchdown of the season. Gabriel Ruiz to try for the point after out of the hold by Daquan Neal. And that kick is up, and that kick is good. And so, with 10.38 left to play in the opening quarter, the Barnstormers open a 7 to nothing lead over the Bismarck Bucks. Good start for Iowa. Daquan Neal leading the team down the field to score. Mediacom's reliable, powerful internet service has never been more important. We're actively hiring technicians, customer service representatives, and other key roles to keep our communities connected. Mediacom has been providing employees with the power to succeed for over 20 years. Text Mediacom to 97211 to apply and learn more about our full-time positions with generous benefits. Don't wait. Virtual interviews are happening now. Join the Mediacom team. We're a family as much as we are a business week at Iowa's number one vacation destination, Okaboji. Catch Okaboji this week, all summer long, and it's only on MC22. Each year, one in six Americans get sick due to a foodborne illness. People can get food poisoning from eating hot food that isn't kept hot, cold food that isn't kept cold, or old food that should be thrown out. If you get sick from eating food made outside your home, report that illness by calling 844-IOWA-SICK. Feeling queasy? Call. It's easy. 844-IOWA-SIC. 844-IOWA-SICK on that drive for the Barnstormers converting twice on third down. Let's take a look at one of them. 
you know, the guys look a lot poised so far to start the game. So you can tell they got a lot more fire this week to start the game off. This is a big, big third down conversion here for Daquan. He sits back in the pocket, has plenty of time, great protection up front, and throws a great ball to the person. Makes it easy. Baton Person, who played collegiately Langston in Oklahoma, makes his fourth touchdown reception of the season. Come on now, let's do this thing. Now Rui to kick off for the Barnstormers. On the ground and a quick return. Across the 20 to near midfield. And again, some pushing and shoving. And again, it's not like these teams don't have a history. We mentioned they played twice before. And frankly, the Barnstormers were embarrassed by their last visit to Bismarck when they lost 53 to 20. I mean, I think it goes, I think it goes to show the guys are, are, are awake and alive this game for sure. They're not sleepwalking out here tonight and they're being active. I'm sure Coach Moss likes it as long as it's controlled. Absolutely, control being the key. Absolutely. So from the 21-yard line, this will be the Bismarck Bucks' first offensive set. And the third game for Kenyatta Allen at quarterback. He's back to throw on first down. He's being pursued. The ball is jarred loose. And it is picked up and it is returned for a touchdown by Tony Jones, the team's leading tackler. He almost had a sack. Better than that, he got a touchdown. Yeah, I know Coach Moss is, is very happy to have Tony Jones back in the lineup. He's been a leader for him on the defensive side of the ball, uh, leading the team to tackle there. But Tony Jones just comes scot free on a blitz, and the quarterback could not break free. And I mean, it's, he made an even better play on the ball by ripping it out of his hand. So. Great start for the Barnstormers here tonight. Tony Jones, who was inactive a couple of weeks ago, making up for lost time. Very active. How awesome is that? It's a good start for the guys so far. Absolutely. This a direct contrast to the game in Bismarck when Bismarck got off to a 20 to nothing lead. And here the Barnstormers at only 9 22 in the first quarter already lead 13 to nothing. And Rui will try to make it a 14 to nothing ball game. So the offense and the defense scores early for Iowa. The point after is good. It's a 14 to nothing start for the Iowa Barnstormers. Barely six minutes into the contest. The guys came off the bus ready this week. They That's certainly good. did. There's no question about that. And they have got the Bucks' attention very quickly. Absolutely. I mean, seeing Jones come through Scott free first play of the game there on defense, there's no better way uh, to start the game there if you're a defensive player. See, a defensive player scooping up a fumble, isn't that how you got that nickname, Big Spurs? I mean, I just so happened to be in the right place at the right time, but that is it. You know, guys flying around, making plays, and, you know, being opportunistic. I know Coach talked about that for Bismarck, but so far it's the Barnstorm is taking advantage of opportunities there. You know what some players forget is, and obviously you remembered it on your big play, was you got to get the ball first, right? You can't run to you, you secure it. Absolutely. Yep. He looked that in. Luckily, he didn't have any pressure around him and got to kind of lightly jog into the end zone. And so the Barnstormers with a very quick 14 to nothing lead will kick off. Once again, Rui will kick off. Deep to return, Isaiah Strayhorn. Stray Horn out of the end zone to the 15-yard line, the 20. Field opens up, 20, 15, 10, one man to beat. And that man makes the tackle, and that's the kicker, Rui, who stood his ground and made the tackle and prevented a touchdown. Saved the touchdown. That's an awesome tackle by Rui. This is Stray Horn, who played collegiately at Northwest Missouri State. Look at him take off. I mean, usually when the blocking is set up that great, there's typically a problem. And it kind of goes to show with the, with the yellow hankies there on the field down there. It looks like it might be coming back. So it's all going to come back, back to the two-yard line, wipe off what would have been a huge gain on the kick return. Instead, as you said, there had to be a reason, right? Yeah, I mean, he came scot-free and nobody was home. So typically doesn't happen. Obviously, guys do make mistakes, but... Kind of goes to show somebody got a little little handsy in there. Had to come back. And so from the two-yard line, Kenyana Allen with just his second snap. It's a running play to Strayhorn. 
Strayhorn is going to be tackled as he hits the five-yard line. Barnstormers group tackling, but at that point, and off the bottom of the stack was Jalen Moore. Let's take a look at the Bismarck offense. And already a change. Strayhorn getting the starting call ahead of Justin Rankin, who had been the leading ground gainer for Bismarck. Allen at quarterback, Kerrigan, former Barnstormer Harvey will be a one wide receiver. J.T. Stokes, the leading receiver at the other. Boyd, another former Barnstormer, Sterling Clark on the offensive line along with Toriano round three. On second down, Allen trying to scramble out of the pocket. Loses the football, but the whistle is blown, and he's ruled down at the 11-yard line. Will be very close to a first down. It looks like... Defensively, this is the way the Barnstormers will start it. Some new faces in there. One of them they're very glad to head back is Tyrone Cromwell. He's been out with an injury. He's in the defensive backfield with Walker and McClure. Tony Jones, who already made the big play, returns to the linebacker after not playing a week. And it's Bartlett, Jayshon Washington, one of the newcomers off the Louisville dispersal roster, and Christopher Biggers up front. Third down on the yard from the 10-yard line for Allen. And the Bucks. And Allen will get the first down himself. And again, a quick tackle is made by Jalen Moore. Moore, who last week had eight tackles, five solos, and an interception against Green Bay. And once again, he's done a nice job with an open field tackle. Yeah, he was securing tackles a whole lot the last go round. Uh, he sees a gap here, fights the block, gets off, and makes a great open field tackle. That definitely could have been a lot more, a lot more yards picked up, but. Uh, way to get off the ball there for more. Justin Rankin now comes in as a wide receiver. Strayhorn remains the running back. Some injuries in the Bucks wide receiver court, so we'll have to check that out as the night goes on as Allen throws to the near sideline. And going for the interception was Moore. He didn't get it, and instead it's hauled in for a first down by Justin Rankin. I'll tell you what I have noticed the past couple plays here. Everybody's rigging at the ball. So these guys are really, really trying to run to the ball and create some sort of turnovers. He's ruled down at the 20-yard line. Yes, they definitely have. And you saw Jones take a punch at it there. Yeah. And it'll bring up a second down and three. Kenyatta Allen played in this country for Robert Morris in Illinois. Played at a college in England. And we'll tell you about that a little bit later. But has also played in Poland. He's played in Germany, and this year it's signed to play in Turkey. It's a bad snap. It's loose. There's a big pileup for it. And the Bucks, who are very shaky at the outset, have recovered. But the Barnstormers nearly had another possession. But off the bottom of the stack was Rankin. He recovered the fumble. Yeah, it looks like there was definitely a big miscommunication in. <laughs> The uh, center snaps the ball off to his left-hand side, and the quarterback was not expecting that. So, so far, not on the same page there communication-wise. No, again, Bismarck, though, working with their fifth starting quarterback this year. By the way, one of them, they lost to the Iowa Barnstormers. Richard Stametti has just joined the Barnstormers as a backup quarterback this week. He quarterbacked against the Barnstormers at Bismarck. Allen. Ducks underneath pressure, throws to Rankin at the 20-yard line. Rankin is hit immediately by Moore, and it will not be a first down. And in fact, it'll bring up a fourth down. Yeah, the Barnstormers are flying all over the field today. This is, you can tell there's a little bit of a playoff intensity out there right now. It's very much unlike what the Barnstormers exhibited two weeks ago in their loss to Green Bay. 34-26, and in fact, that game, that last touchdown came with no time on the clock, so it was really a kind of a cosmetic touchdown. Absolutely. Made the score look a lot closer than what it was. Different story so far tonight. 14-0 Barnstormers. Little over four left to play in the first quarter. Allen fires the ball tipped by a Barnstormer, but then it is caught and down to the 19-yard line for a first down. That time, Jay Sean Washington actually got a hand on it, but the ball was still complete. It looks like they got got a little lucky there. Uh, that's a great play by Washington. Drops off in coverage and gets his hands on the ball. Usually that's good enough, but just so happened to be a receiver there waiting on that tip. So uh, fortunate bounce there uh, for Bismarck. 
And so Bismarck down with a first down at the 19-yard line of Iowa. This their first sustained drive. Of course, the first one ended in a lost fumble. Pass complete to the near sideline. Incomplete, I should say. The intended receiver was Mike Kerrigan. Kerrigan, who's caught five touchdown passes this year, well covered on the play, and the pass not complete, and it'll bring up second and ten. He is pointing at the video board, and sometimes those receivers know exactly what happens there with the ball. Now he's saying his mouse off his foot, but it's kind of tough. Well, normally the camera doesn't lie, and it either hit his foot or it hit the ground. I think he's saying it hit his foot. But no challenge flag thrown by Rod Miller. Still be a second down and 10. The handoff goes to Mike Kerrigan. Kerrigan to the 10. Kerrigan fights his way to the five. First and goal for the Bismarck Bucks. Kerrigan, usually a receiver, used as a runner that time. That's just his 10th carry of the year. But he did a good job picking up 10 yards. Do a quick end around there and get right on the outside of Washington. That's a quick hit and play and blocked it perfectly and Kerrigan gets outside for a nice game. And so the ball marked down at the six where it's first down goal to go for the Bismarck Bucks. They come in with a seven and six record coming off a 41-30 victory over Green Bay. They wound up playing the Blizzard four times this year. We're four and oh against Green Bay and three and six against the rest of the league. The throw to the end zone, and it is caught for a touchdown, hauled in by former Barnstormer Raheem Harvey. Yeah, it looks like the defensive back there falls down. Cromwell was in the end zone by himself, fell down there. So a little bit of a lapse in coverage, but, you know, Bismarck makes up for it and gets a quick touchdown there. So a former Barnstormer Harvey with the touchdown reception. And another former Barnstormer will try to add the point after, and that's Cody Barber. Barber came here late in the 2017 season. Barnstormers had lost to kicker, and he came in for the playoff run. Barber attempts the PAT. It is up, and it is good. And with 105 left to play in the opening quarter, Bismarck's on the board, and it's a 14-7 Barnstormer lead. Mediacom is winning awards across the U.S., keeping you connected, keeping you safe, rising to the challenge, challenging the limits. Thanks to our award-winning employees, never settling, never backing down, always planning ahead, and always getting better. Mediacom is proud to be named 2021 U.S. Best Managed Company by Deloitte and The Wall Street Journal. Each year, one in six Americans get sick due to a foodborne illness. People can get food poisoning from eating hot food that isn't kept hot, cold food that isn't kept cold, or old food that should be thrown out. If you get sick from eating food made outside your home, report that illness by calling 844-IOWA-SICK. Feeling queasy? Call. It's easy. 844-IOWA-SIC. 844-IOWA-SICK. Week at Iowa's number one vacation destination, Okaboji. Get to Okaboji this week all summer long, and it's only on MC22. People from Bismarck have made the nine and a half hour drive to cheer on their Bucks. This the second year in the IFL for the Bucks, who used to be in the CIF, the franchise founded back in 2016. Barber's got the ball in the tee, ready to kick it off. And deep for the Barnstormers, Jaquan Williams, who had a 37-yard return a couple of weeks ago against Green Bay that set up the team's first touchdown. This time, though, he's going to be wrapped up at the five-yard line. Good open field tackle by an outstanding linebacker in Darian Jackson, who leads their team in tackles with 63. 
And it looks like Williams missed time to bounce there and ended up getting a little bit behind him, and that kind of puts him behind the eight ball and doesn't get anywhere on the return. Boy, Williams came flying down the field. Williams, who played collegiately at Arkansas State in 2018, is graduating here. It started at Bowie State, so uh, Bowie State, I should say. So he's an outstanding talent, well recruited on the Division One level. Kirk Kelly, his second game as a starter for the Barnstormers, over the ball at center. Daquan Neal will work out of the shotgun. And he throws it right through the hands of Carrington Thompson, and that's the second time that the ball has gone right through Thompson's hands. And he may be a little overly amped because Junior's in the stands tonight, maybe trying to run before he catches the football. That kind of looks like it. You know, the rule is you got to look the ball in and, and bring it in and tuck it before you run. But So that ends the first quarter. But this was the big action in the second quarter, a tip ball. And the ball went flying every direction, but it was caught by a receiver for Bismarck. Mediacom's reliable, powerful internet service has never been more important. We're actively hiring technicians, customer service representatives, and other key roles to keep our communities connected. Mediacom has been providing employees with the power to succeed for over 20 years. Text Mediacom to 97211 to apply and learn more about our full-time positions with generous benefits. Don't wait. Virtual interviews are happening now. Join the Mediacom team. We're a family as much as we are a business. Each year, one in six Americans get sick due to a foodborne illness. People can get food poisoning from eating hot food that isn't kept hot, cold food that isn't kept cold, or old food that should be thrown out. If you get sick from eating food made outside your home, report that illness by calling 844-IOWA-SICK. Feeling queasy? Call. It's easy. 844-IOWA-SIC. 844-IOWA-SICK. Catch all the 2021 Iowa Barnstormer home games exclusively on MC22, your local sports programming leader. Quarter begins with the Barnstormers having the ball at their own six-yard line, facing a second and ten. Iowa off to a quick 14-0 lead, and then Bismarck came back with a minute five left to go in the first quarter to complete a 48-yard drive. And Brent, this is exactly what Bismarck likes to do, long drive. That was a 10-play, 48-yard almost seven minute drive control the clock you know you keep those guys off the field and gives you a better chance to win uh, the barnstorm is struck so quick and kind of keeps them cold on offense too so we'll see how they react here which means time of possession means absolutely nothing because right now after a quarter 340 for iowa 935 for bismarck but 14 to 7 iowa with the lead because iowa scored so quickly Cavallo shifts back into the backfield as Neal takes the snap, throws right over the middle. This one is caught by Carrington Thompson Sr. And he has a first down out to the 17-yard line before he is knocked down by Ben Mola. Looks like this one may be coming back. May have some extra hands there in the middle. One of the linemen up front. Good catch there by Thompson Sr. Illegal blitz. Number 32 on the defense, rushing outside the end. Five-yard penalty, automatic so first. Bismarck. Yeah, so Darian Jackson, the outstanding linebacker for the Bucks, guilty of the infraction. There are, There is the officiating crew. The illegal blitz is declined. The result of the play is a first down. Because that is more yardage than the penalty would have occurred. So Thompson Sr.'s catch sticks. It does. Jim Mojahowicz is the referee who you saw on the call a moment ago. It looked like a quick pop pass, and as Thompson grabbed it, it looks like he looked that one in and secured the catch before making those extra steps upfield. So hopefully we can get some good momentum out of that. His 27th catch of the year, and that leads the team in that category. 
Now he'll get a chance on the ground with a running play, and he is met head on and dropped at the 18 yard line. Got a yard on the play, but suffered at the end of it with a hard hit by Darian Jackson, number 32. Jackson is all over the field. He's a really good linebacker, very instinctive. Uh, he kind of sniffs that play out and meets Thompson Sr. right in the gap there. Didn't have much of a chance. Second and nine after the one-yard pickup. Les Moss sends his quarterback in with the play. You mentioned Moss, 162 and 88 as a head coach, and that means tonight the 251st game of his career as a head coach. The 33 years in the indoor game. Daquan Neal, the 6215 pounder, throws over the head of Williams. Williams, the intended receiver, but the pass was just a little bit overthrown. A little high, but at least it went high out of bounds and not high to the other guy. So I'm sure he'll take that one back. On the offensive line for the Barnstormers tonight, trying to protect Neal and give him more time. Stephen Rowley, who was hurt and didn't play much two games ago, is back. And Kurt Kelly is the center. Rousey on one side. They were teammates at Troy and very good friends. And rounding out the front three, D.J. Loving, the former Grandview University star. Third down and nine. Neal with an open receiver. Williams, 15. Williams, 10. Williams down to the seven-yard line. First and goal, Barnstormers. The Barnstormers convert for the third time on third down, the second time on third and long. Yeah, it looks, it looks like they only, uh, they dropped six, I believe. So they only rushed two, and, you know, Daquan had plenty of time back there, found the open man. Williams was wide open, so puts the ball right in his lap. First two times these two teams played, Bismarck played Iowa man-to-man. -man. They had been dropping more. They've been dropping to the six-man coverage, and the Barnstormers really were aware of it. Yeah, they didn't fall for it. I'm sure it helped that they got uh, the quarterback from Bismarck to kind of give them an idea of what to expect also. That probably didn't hurt, did it? Not at all. Rich Stametti joining the Barnstormers after a stint at Bismarck. Head off Cavallo. Cavallo sheds a tackle. Gets to the end zone. Touchdown for the Barnstormers. Elon Cavallo with his ninth fletching touchdown of the season. And that's a great hard run by Cavallo. Not being taken down by the first tackler there. Keeps those legs turned and gets himself to the end zone. Shakes off that first tackle. You can't arm tackle this guy. He's very strong lower body. He might not look as big, but he runs very, very strong. Very strong run. 17-yard touchdown run. Rui to try the point after. Two for two so far tonight. Neil the holder. And the point after is good by Rui, who in his senior year at the University of Kansas did not miss a PAT, hit all 51 he tried. And the Barnstorm is able to cash in on the tough run by Kamalu to lead 21 to 7. Mediacom is winning awards across the U.S., keeping you connected keeping you safe, rising to the challenge, challenging the limits. Thanks to our award-winning employees, never settling, never backing down, always planning ahead, and always getting better. Mediacom is proud to be named 2021 U.S. Best Managed Company by Deloitte and The Wall Street Journal. Sweet at Iowa's number one vacation destination, Okaboji. Each year, one in six Americans get sick due to a foodborne illness. People can get food poisoning from eating hot food that isn't kept hot, cold food that isn't kept cold, or old food that should be thrown out. If you get sick from eating food made outside your home, report that illness by calling 844-IOWA-SICK. Feeling queasy? Call. It's easy. 844-IOWA-SIC. 844-IOWA-SICK. 
uh, this young guy puts on the equipment, part of the relay race. And look at this effort. Now, he, by the way, was going against somebody who's probably four years older who won the event, but that didn't stop him. And in fact, nobody was going to stop him. He was supposed to turn around and go the other way. He is going. He is going. He is not quite gone. <laughs> She but may then, have won the event. He won the show. Absolutely. And then he did complete the run, by the way. See? He's still going. Still going. <laughs> Never Future give Barnstormer up. right there, Brent That's awesome. Never give up. Absolutely. So the Barnstormers will kick to this mark for the third time. Isaiah Strayhorn, one of the deep men for... The Bismarck Bucks and the other is Zeril Hendrick. Hendrick averages almost 17 yards per kick return, so he's the dangerous guy, and they certainly will try to keep the ball away from him. It's Hendrick on the near side and Strayhorn on the far side, and it's going to go to Hendrick after the bounce over Strayhorn. And he trips himself and goes down at the six-yard line. Strayhorn wound up catching the football as it went over the head of Hendrick and he winds up tripping himself and self tackling as it were at the six yard line. We call that a good old turf monster. Strayhorn gets it and tries to tries to make a cut and the turf monster said no sir. Because he may have been slightly knocked off balance by the fact his teammate ran into him first. Just a little bit. That definitely did not help. Did not help. Did not. And so Kenyatta Allen, six foot two hundred pounds. The quarterback for Bismarck. In 2019, he played for Durham University in Northeast England and got his degree without celebrating, got into an altercation with a bouncer, broke the bouncer's jaw, was charged with an offense, and was able to escape that as Rankin catches the pass and is pushed out of the 13 yard line. But anyway, he had a 14-month suspended sentence before he was fined and had to pay 500 pounds before he was finally released and able to, at that point, sign with Turkey for this season. But then that football league unable to play due to COVID. And so then he came back to the Bismarck Bucks who tried to sign him originally. You follow that? It's, it, it's a lot. It's it a lot. It sounds like <laughs> it's a lot. He so must, can, must be a fiery guy, too, though. Yeah. You know? <laughs> go off on a bouncer. And Kenyatta Allen said it was kind of a misunderstanding with the bouncer. Bouncer, broken job, but collected his 500 pounds. By the way, uh, Allen is listed as six foot even. Just for your information, Brett, that is 14 and a half stone in England. 14 and a half stone. You got that? Good to know. <laughs> if I'm ever in England. That's amazing. So we have a, a brief delay here as the Bucks now break the huddle, giving us time to slip that story in after the one completed pass. And it'll be a second down and three call after the seven yard game. Allen is back, rolls, throws long, and the pass is incomplete to the wrong side of the intended receiver, Kerrigan, or at least not the side that he was looking for. It's like the Barnstormers took a play out of uh, Bismarck's playbook. Rush two and drop six, so that kind of it makes Allen have to make a good throw there and ends up being just a little bit behind. Absolutely. And as you mentioned, the former Bismarck quarterback was on the scout team for Iowa last week running Bismarck plays against the Iowa defense, and that has to help. That, that helps the defense prepare tremendously. I mean, having somebody that's been there that knows exactly where routes are going to be and where guys should be open, that helps the defense a lot in preparation. Third down call coming up from the 12-yard line. Allen's got time, still has time, throws, and the pass is complete in the middle to Andre Williams, and he makes the catch at midfield for a first down. Yeah, he got wrapped up. But the takedown looked kind of ugly, but he's able to get up and walk off on his own power. That 14-yard gain gives the Bucks the first down in Iowa territory at the 24. So Allen is, is, is a very poised season quarterback. He kind of sits in the pocket, waits on this guy to come open, and found the open receiver, delivers a nice strike to him. And again, he was given time to do that. Yeah. Barnstormers are still doing the, well, that time, they only rush two, so 
no pressure on the quarterback at all. Allen from the 24 and first down. Hand fakes to Rankin, keeps himself, slides down before Cromwell can give him a lick, and he goes down at the 16 or 17-yard line. The market at the 17, and it's a good game, though, on first down. It looks like he was not one to take punishment, that's for sure. <laughs> Gets down really quick, but Cromwell still let him know he was there, just in case. Smart move, right? Yeah, absolutely. Second down at the 17-yard line. Wide receivers to the left, back to throw. Allen sets up, delivers left, and the pass is complete to the nine-yard line and into the red zone for the first down. The Bucks is the pass called in by Raheem Harvey, the second grab by Harvey, who played for the Barnstormers in their IFL championship season in 2018. Yeah, that's a great pass there. Bartlett almost gets his hand on the ball on that. So that's a great strike there by Allen to Harvey. Harvey, 35 catches this year. This mark has three receivers that are between 35 and 40 catches, so they spread the ball around. First and goal at the nine, quarterback keeper play, Allen inside the five yard line, brought down from behind by Dorian Walker at the three yard line. Kind of, kind of surprising there. Allen, Allen got some surprising speed. He doesn't usually look to run, but it looks like this was a design quarterback run. And, Gets outside, gets the edge really quick. Almost took out his receiver in the process, but it's a great quarterback run nonetheless. To Hembert, number seven, is coming as the wide receiver. Again, some injury in the wide receiving core for Bismarck, and so going into the game, Rod Miller wasn't quite sure who his starters would be. But right now he's got Rankin, Kerrigan in there, along with Bird as receivers. And a timeout as there's some confusion by the Bucks. That was pretty obvious as Allen was gesturing to the right, and the receivers were all gathered on the right side, and Bismarck will use a timeout. And while we have a break, this will give us the chance to update the standings for you in the IFL. Arizona continues to set the pace at nine and two, and again, because Louisville has dropped from the league mid-season, it's an odd number of games that are being played, the same number of games not being played by everybody, Bottom line is, instead of a 14 playoff, it's now an 18 playoff. So you see the Barnstormers right now ninth in the league, but you see there's very little gap to get into the playoffs right now. Yeah, I mean, they're only a game behind. That's why every game from here on out is extremely important. Uh, giving them eight teams or eight possibilities to qualify, there's pretty much a, a three-way tie there on the bottom half of the league. So if they can win out, they give themselves a much better chance of securing the spot. Two other games in the league tonight. Spokane plays at Frisco, so that's a big game in the upper part of the standings. Green Bay wraps up their season tonight early against Mass, and Massachusetts has won five straight. And then there are a couple of more games on the schedule tomorrow afternoon in the IFL. But right now, back to this one. Second down, goal to go. Allen hands off Rankin. Rankin battles his way forward. Did he cross the plane? He did. A touchdown for Bismarck as Rankin gets into the end zone on good second effort. And it's a 14 to 21 to 13 game. Like it was a good strong run by Rankin. Uh, Barnstorm has had guys in place, but nobody showed up to make a tackle. Rankin was able to kind of bully his way in and keep the pile moving. A seventh play, 44 yard drive, results in the three yard touchdown run. It's a good back and forth ball game. It certainly is. Cody Barber on for the PAT, and that kick is good. And so with 5.20 left to play in the first half, it's a 21-14 game, and with one exception, both teams have scored in every possession, and that one exception was an Iowa touchdown by the defense on a recovered fumble. Rankin's coming downhill. He looks to be a low, too. He's, I mean, he runs strong and low to the ground, and those offensive linemen kept their feet moving to help him get in the end zone. 
front lines, mercy and unity point. Rankin played collegiately at Kent State for three years and then Northwest Missouri State for his senior year. He is the leading rusher and number seven in the league, so that run no surprise. You look at Rankin right there. He averages over four yards a carry. That was his 15th rushing touchdown this season. He is 5'9", but 215, so a low center of gravity, and you're right, very strong. Absolutely. So the Barnstormers now an important possession for them. They opened that big 14 to nothing lead. They really need to keep the momentum going and not allow Bismarck to catch them at this point after the opening up that big start. Yeah, Bismarck deferred, so obviously they get the ball in the second half. So it'll be important on this drive. The Barnstormers kind of take their time and don't leave much time left for Bismarck to score now and again to potentially score again to start the next half. So that's why this is very significant as Jawan Williams will return for Iowa. 15, 20, 25, and he gets to the 21-yard line before he is stopped. Big tackle that time, turned in by Darian Jackson once again. Jackson is everywhere. This time Williams steps in front of the ball and doesn't let it get past him. It's a great blocking up front by the Barnstorms to get the ball in the other half of the field. He's shown great quickness, and when he gets into the open field, very tough to stop. And really, Jackson was about the last line of defense. He was. Almost got the crease and took it all the way to the house. So the Barnstormers with a good field position at the 22-yard line of the Bucks. Bucks do give up a lot of yards, Rod Miller, their coach, is not concerned about that. He said, where we're big is third down stops, although they don't have any tonight as the Barnstormers are 3-3 three three on third down. Cavallu may or may not have supposed to have the handoff. Neal winds up pulling it back and carries the tackler with him to the 17-yard line. Yeah, it looks like that was a late mesh there for him. Didn't get the look he wanted yet. Neal decided to keep the ball and take it himself to see what he can pick up. And again, it's Darian Jackson with yet another tackle. He's everywhere, number 32 out of Arkansas State. Yeah, he is all over the field today. He's got his hands on this game so far, that's for sure. After the gain of four, it is second down and six with just under four minutes left to play in the first half at halftime. Chance for you to meet the very colorful kicker of the Barnstormers, Gabriel Ruiz. The handoff comes to Joan Williams. Williams carries to the 12-yard line and looks to have a first down. He does. First down, Barnstormers at the 12-yard line of Bismarck. It's like the Barnstormers are putting together a nice methodical drive there, picking up a couple yards here and there, and Williams with the speed right around to get that edge and pick up the first down. Williams played at New Haven University with an honorable mention, All-American. That is Division II school. Just his third game active for the Barnstormers. He's been here a couple of weeks prior to that. Played the spring league, which delayed his arrival at Iowa. The handoff comes to Thompson. Thompson to the end zone. Carrington Thompson Sr. with a touchdown run to boost the Barnstormers lead to 27 to 14. I wonder if he's going to give that ball to his son. Yes, I'm sure he will. Oh, there he is. <laughs> There is Junior, you? Carrington Thompson Jr., present from Carrington Thompson Sr. That is awesome. It's a great moment, isn't it? Yes, it is. Great run play here. I mean, they ran the pretty much the exact same play the opposite way for Thompson Sr. and finds a crease and walks it right on in the end zone, almost untouched. Rui on for the PAT. And that kick is up, and that kick is good. He is perfect in four tries. And the Barnstormers have doubled up on Bismarck and open a 28 to 14 lead with 2.28 left to play in the first half. Another look at the run by Thompson. Yeah, Thompson sees that outside get cut off quick and he cuts that thing north and south, which is the best way to go. You play football, don't dance around, get right downhill. And he did just that. Got to score a nice touchdown in front of his son. It's got to be a great moment there. Only three plays, 22 yards for the Barnstormers to get into the end zone. So here's Iowa attacking and scoring very quickly on their possessions. This mark, they are more methodical in scoring on theirs. Yeah, I mean, the Barnstormers left them a little time on the clock, but they did their job and scored 
So hopefully they can get a stop again before the half to keep them from scoring and cutting this lead down. It would be very significant. 28-14, Iowa leading. Remember, losing at Bismarck, 53-22, losing by 30, biggest loss of the year back on June the 12th, has obviously provided some big-time motivation for the Barnstormers tonight. Yeah, it looks like the guys came off the bus ready to play ball. They're flying around, they're making plays, and guys are where they need to be so far to start this game. Iowa with a total of 96 yards of total offense, 79 yards total offense by Bismarck. Gabe Rui on to kickoff. He said early in his career, you'll hear this at halftime, early in his career, just putting the ball through the narrow uprights was a big thing. Now, strategically kickoffs is the thing that he really works on. Because in the indoor football league, where you kick off and how you kick off, and this is the onside attempt, and it goes out of bounds. Well, that was interesting. Yeah, Johnson delivered a blow there to Walker. I hope he's uh, able to pop back up. Well, he did pop back up, but Johnson definitely made sure he understood. Yes, he did. A little, <laughs> yeah, a little strong hit after the play. And Jalen Moore is down. Sorry, Jalen Moore. Yeah. yeah, Moore down. And, and obviously, you can tell by the look in his face, in some pain, Kylie Zoski is the trainer for the Barnstormers who's attending to him. Ouch. Yeah, that does not hurt. He hit him right into the wall, too, and that wall is unforgiving. So, And again, that was number 32, Darian Jackson, who's just a, a true force, but that time an unfortunate force. And luckily, Jalen Moore looks like he's able to get up with just a little bit of assistance. Jalen Moore, who was so outstanding two weeks ago on defense with his interception and five solo tackles, seems to be... Pretty okay. And again, a good trainer, Kylie Zosky, with the Barnstormers all year, and she's going to make sure that he is 100% before they send him back. He's trying to jog it off, but she's telling him, don't be, don't be a tough guy. Take your time walking in. Got to make sure you're okay. He's trying to tell her he's fine, right? Absolutely. Always. I'm always fine, no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> First down for Bismarck. Kenyatta Allen at the controls. Allen steps up, floats it to the end zone, leaping grab for a touchdown. What a great catch by Raheem Harvey, his second touchdown grab of the night, and that was spectacular. Yeah, great catch by Harvey there. Goes up, but even better ball by Allen. Allen sits back in the pocket. This looks like more of a timing route. He takes about two or three steps back and lays it up. Harvey gets right on the opposite side there of Cromwell and makes a great catch in the end zone for the touchdown. Raheem Harvey, who played at Lewis Clark Valley College prior to his stint with the Barnstormers. Former Barnstormer Barber on to attempt the point after. So a couple of former Barnstormers having good nights tonight for Raheem Harvey, his second touchdown grab of the night. And thus far, the point after has been perfect by Cody Barber. So with a minute 38 left to play in the first half, it's a 28-21 ball game. Always some good motivation to have to play against your former team there. And Harvey so far is showing up, making a great touchdown catch there. Still leaves plenty of time, though, for the Barnstormers to come right back down the field. and score again before half and that was a quick one play 17 yard drive by Bismarck after the attempted onside kick fell short good look at Raheem again part of the Barnstormers championship year of 2018 a veteran though of indoor football 138 left to play in the first half Still plenty of time to put some points up there. Taquan Neal thus far tonight, four out of eight for 63 yards. 
He's relied on his running backs well, though. Thompson's carried for 13 yards, Cavallo for seven, and Williams for seven, so he's mixed the run in the pass very well. It looks like coach is trying to make sure that uh, Bismarck doesn't pick up on any tendencies and making him have to play the full game. Iowa trying to end a three-game losing streak. Williams once again on the return. Blazing speed when he gets to the open field. Penalty markers go down as he runs a long way, but I think it's going to come back. I believe you're right there, Larry. I tell you what, though, that guy is a breakaway threat anytime he gets his hands on the football because of his speed. Anytime. He's, I mean, he makes one cut and he gets downhill really fast. He had averaged 18 yards, two oh, previous returns. Turn to return, number 14. Half the distance of goal, first down. Dorian Walker guilty of the hold, according to referee Jim Wojohowicz. And so the Barnstormers will start at the six-yard line. Get their first penalty so far of the half, which is good for them as well. You know, Coach talked a little bit about that being a problem for them in the previous games and some of their losses. And so far, I've been playing fairly smart tonight. Barnstormers, all three timeouts remaining as we head down to the one-minute warning. Iowa will get off one play prior to that, it would appear. Cavallo comes out as a wideout, so it's an empty backfield. Two wide receivers to each side, or two receivers to each side, back to throw. And that ball goes to the third row. As Daquan Neal had to get rid of it in a hurry because there was an on charging lineman, and he dumped it, and that man made the catch. So we reached our one minute warning in an action packed first half. Iowa with a 28 21 lead over Bismarck. Iowa ball when we come back. Mediacom's reliable, powerful internet service has never been more important. We're actively hiring technicians, customer service representatives, and other key roles to keep our communities connected. Mediacom has been providing employees with the power to succeed for over 20 years. Text Mediacom to 97211 to apply and learn more about our full-time positions with generous benefits. Don't wait. Virtual interviews are happening now. Join the Mediacom team. We're a family as much as we are a business. Catch all the 2021 Iowa Barnstormer home games exclusively on MC22, your local sports programming leader. Each year, one in six Americans get sick due to a foodborne illness. People can get food poisoning from eating hot food that isn't kept hot, cold food that isn't kept cold, or old food that should be thrown out. If you get sick from eating food made outside your home, report that illness by calling 844-IOWA-SICK. Feeling queasy? Call. It's easy. 844-IOWASIC. 844-IOWASIC. Curvey with you at Wells Fargo Arena. One minute to go first half, 28-21. Iowa with the lead over Bismarck and with a second down call coming up at the six-yard line. Daquan Neal up the middle, looks for some running room, gets it out to the 15-yard line and will be just a yard short of a first down. Brought down on the play by Jeff Branch. The Cowbells are back, and uh, you remember the chorus of Cowbells when you played here, right? Oh, yeah. That was always a sign. You better make a play. Well, these fans will let you know about it. And I was going to take a timeout, which will leave them with two. 40 seconds left on the first half clock. Barnstormers, I think maybe didn't have everything together because they did run a lot of time before finally using that timeout, and I think they weren't ready to use the timeout. It was just... Uh, maybe not together on the same page there yeah it didn't look like they had much of a plan coming out of uh that time out there with the one minute warning and they lost about 20 seconds there i mean the play was dead in about 10 seconds and everybody was still kind of confused about what's next so we well, pointed out this is going to get the ball first to start the second half after they won the toss and deferred so the barnstormers really need to convert on this drive to open a margin 
Yeah, they, they would definitely want to so they can keep a lead. You know, you want to keep Bismarck behind. And so far, there's only been one stop in the game, and that's uh, the Barnstormers forcing that turnover early. So you got to put points on the board to win. Neal quarterback sneaking for the first down, gets it. And the clock has stopped while they reset the chain to 36 seconds. Iowa quickly up to the line of scrimmage. As soon as those sticks are set, I was ready to work. Kirk Kelly, 350 pounds, up over the ball at center, flanked by Loving and Rousey. Neal up the middle, open receiver. Thompson to the 15-yard line. Scheduled tackler and goes to the end zone. Bismarck is saying he was down. The official signal he got to the end zone, and it does not look like they're going to rule him down. Great effort there by Thompson Senior. Let's see. Let's see if he got down or not. And he gets wide open. He gets tackled open field. No, no knee touches. Puts that hand down like every good coach teaches you. You get hit, put your hand down for that extra balance. He keeps it, and it's another souvenir there for his son. So how about Carrington Thompson? senior who started the game with two drops since then hasn't dropped anything and has scored two touchdowns it's good to see the quarterback never lost faith in him for dropping those two balls and keeps giving him a shot to go make a play and he is making it we are going to get the challenge but i think what you saw is that it's going to be upheld as a touchdown unless they're counting the forearm what maybe the forearm or elbow touches and that would rule him down, which is pretty close right there. Jim Wojohowicz is the referee. And he's dialing up the play, which is provided by our MC22 crew. And they, of course, do a great job and give the referees a lot to see and, and a very accurate picture. You saw it there, captured it perfectly. Very good angle there on it. Might be down because of that forearm and elbow. It's a great effort still, nonetheless, by Thompson. Absolutely. But is it a touchdown? It depends on what part of land. They're saying his arm was down, so we'll come back to about the 15-yard line. So no touchdown for Carrington Thompson, Jr., senior, I should say. So the ball right at the 15-yard line. 24 seconds on the clock. Two timeouts left for the Barnstormers. Alad Cavallo will start next to quarterback Daquan Neal. Thompson really lined up directly behind Neal. Clock will start on the snap. Neal shifting out of the pocket, fakes the shovel, runs himself, and gets down to the 10 yard line. Knocked out of bounds by, once again, Darian Jackson. He doesn't make all the tackles for the Bismarck Bucks, but he makes plenty of them. Pretty darn close to all of them. I'll tell you what, he's all over the place. But you got Deshaun, I mean, Daquan Neal here. I mean, you just never know. He gets out the pocket. He can shovel past you. <laughs> you just got to be on your best behavior when it comes to him. And break down if you get a chance and wrap him up. Did think that shovel pass. I'm not sure he had anybody in front of him, but. That's, that's enough to keep a defender off of you. That's for sure. Out of the shotgun, Neal. High snap from center to bad snap from center, but penalty markers are down. This may come up against Iowa. Yes, it will. So the ball brought back to the 16-yard line. Number 17 on the offense. Please reset the game clock. Ball start by Dayton Person. Going the wrong way here so far. Clock down to 14 seconds. Les Boss talks to his quarterback. And Daquan Neal, who played at Elizabeth City State College in North Carolina. Number two in the IFL in total offense. Number two in passing and rushing. He gets set for a very cool a very crucial second and 11 and the pass is incomplete had a tough time handling the snap and then tried to hit Cavallo and Cavallo couldn't quite catch up with it 
And I think if he catches that snap cleanly, that might have been a better place to throw there for him. But the snap came in pretty hot and low. I mean, it's something he still could have handled. But, you know, I think just that little bit of time and kind of threw off that entire play. And that brings up third down and 11 at the 16-yard line. Now we are down to 10 seconds. Thompson, Person, and Bell, the wide receivers. Another high snap from center. Neal pulls it down, trying to sidestep the tackle of Malik Duncan, and Duncan is able to slow him down until he gets some help. Again, another high snap from center, and that messed up the timing on that play, and Malik Duncan was right on top of it. Yeah, it looks like he was... Hopefully, Neil was hoping to get some sort of position in there for the kicker to come out and make a play. But another high snap there for Neil. Having to reach for those balls changes a lot of things there in terms of timing and where he can go with it. So, hopefully they can get that worked out here at Aspen. So, Gabriel Rui is on for what will be a 29-yard field goal attempt. A couple of weeks ago against Green Bay, he hit from 22 and from 35. And we've got a timeout taken by Bismarck. Probably trying to freeze the kicker. Maybe not with three seconds left. Time to test it out. Any way to keep points off the board, you better try. Rui, we started to mention it earlier. Senior year at the University of Kansas. Hit all 51 of his point afters. was perfect. Also had a good year at field goals. As a junior, was on the third all big 12 team and his coach thought he deserved first team honors and sometimes after playing in the big 12 it, it matters what school you go to so by the way and i hesitate to add this he did in his career at kansas kick a 47 yard field goal against the cyclones i wouldn't doubt it <laughs> i wouldn't doubt it that's the luck of the draw from the 29 yard line big field goal try and once again a timeout will be used. The Bucks have them. No reason they're not going to carry over to the second half. Why not make Rui think just a little bit longer? Use them if you got them. There's Rod Miller, the veteran coach for Bismarck. As we mentioned, a Drake University graduate. Played for Rob Ash in his first year as the Bulldogs head coach back in 88. Also played there in 89. We mentioned he's coached at six different indoor football leagues, the AFL, AF2, the IFL, the Lone Star, the UIF, and the CIF. And he's also, in 2016, was the coach at the China Arena Football League. Now, Rui, once again, will attempt this 29-yard field goal with three seconds left in the half. Plenty of leg into it, and that kick is right up the middle, splitting the uprights. Yeah, Rui says, yeah, how many more timeouts you want to call? It's not going to bother me. Rui ends the half of the 29-yard field goal. He'll be our halftime guest as he sends the Barnstormers to a 31-21 halftime lead. <laughs> nice lead in for our halftime interview by the Barnstormers field goal kicker. It's first responders night tonight, and the first responders being tweeted to quite a show. Barnes over the 10 point lead at halftime, 31 21 over Bismarck. Mediacom is winning awards across the U.S., keeping you connected, keeping you safe, rising to the challenge, challenging the limits. Thanks to our award winning employees. Never settling, never backing down, always planning ahead, and always getting better. Mediacom is proud to be named 2021 U.S. Best Managed Company by Deloitte and The Wall Street Journal. Catch all the 2021 Iowa Barnstormer home games exclusively on MC22, your local sports programming leader. 
Each year, one in six Americans get sick due to a foodborne illness. People can get food poisoning from eating hot food that isn't kept hot, cold food that isn't kept cold, or old food that should be thrown out. If you get sick from eating food made outside your home, report that illness by calling 844-IOWA-SICK. Feeling queasy? Call. It's easy. 844-IOWA-SIC. 844-IOWA-SICK. Catch all the 2021 Iowa Barnstormer home games exclusively on MC22, your local sports programming leader. You gotta feel it to believe it. Get extreme internet starting at $9.99 a month for one year. With fantastic speeds from 60 meg up to one gig. Dynamic streaming video, so real you can feel it. Amplified in-home Wi-Fi and all the power you need to power it all. Get extreme internet starting at $9.99 a month for one year. Call 844-EXTREME-5. Mediacom's reliable, powerful internet service has never been more important. We're actively hiring technicians, customer service representatives, and other key roles to keep our communities connected. Mediacom has been providing employees with the power to succeed for over 20 years. Text Mediacom to 97211 to apply and learn more about our full-time positions with generous benefits. Don't wait. Virtual interviews are happening now. Join the Mediacom team. We're a family as much as we are a business. Catch all the 2021 Iowa Barnstormer home games exclusively on MC22, your local sports programming leader. Each year, one in six Americans get sick due to a foodborne illness. People can get food poisoning from eating hot food that isn't kept hot, cold food that isn't kept cold, or old food that should be thrown out. 
If you get sick from eating food made outside your home, report that illness by calling 844-IOWA-SICK. Feeling queasy? Call. It's easy. 844-IOWA-SIC. 844-IOWA-SICK. Stream 5. Catch all the 2021 Iowa Barnstormer home games exclusively on MC22, your local sports programming leader. You gotta feel it to believe it. Get extreme internet starting at $9.99 a month for one year. With fantastic speeds from 60 meg up to one gig. Dynamic streaming video, so real you can feel it. Amplified in-home Wi-Fi and all the power you need to power it all. Get extreme internet starting at $9.99 a month for one year. Call 844-EXTREME-5. Our halftime guest is the kicker for the Iowa Barnstormers, Gabriel Rui. And Gabriel, uh, let's start with your start as a kicker, which I understand happened when you were around two years old. Tell us about that. Yeah, just growing up, my grandpa would always, um, it was a little different form, though. It was the other football. It was soccer for me. Uh, he just wanted me to kick the ball around and end up uh, working a different form in uh, American football now. How did you get into American football? Uh, I was forced to play, actually. Uh, my sophomore year of high school, just moved to a small town. They all knew about it. I could play soccer, and they needed a kicker. So they wanted me to kick and uh, literally forced me to play. Is it true you actually came off the soccer field, had some sandals on, kicked them off, and made a 30-yard field goal your first time out? 40. It was 40 yards. <laughs> but, yeah, that's exactly what happened. I was just over there and had only sandals on, just kicking around and juggling the ball. They asked me to come kick, and kind of hard to tell my friends now. So. so you didn't have to be talked into it once the football coach summoned you? No, so I had to talk me into it. He had to go talk to my mom. that We owned the, uh, the local restaurant in town, and... Um, my mom found out that I had kicked, and I was telling her I didn't want to play. And telling mom no doesn't really go well, still to this day. So I had no chance. So you grew up in a pizza restaurant, right? Yes, sir. Yep. My my uh, family's Italian. Uh, my grandpa's origins are, but my family's from Argentina. So whenever um, it comes to pizza, I know all about it. Do you make some for teammates at this point? No, no, I don't. <laughs> they can they can fend for themselves. So you went to the University of Kansas and wound up. Your punter, while you were the place kicker, was a good friend. How did that happen? Um, going into my freshman year of college, going to a church camp, we met each other. Um, it was like a little small circle, and then people were just going to this school, this school. We all met up. He was right next to me, and he said he was going to NEO, the same school I was going to. And he said, um, what, like, we had to say what we were doing there. And he said, well, I'm going to be the punter. And I just looked at him. I was like, I don't even know who you are, but I was going to be the kicker. So, And then it just clicked from there. Just uh, He actually just, uh, his baby was born two days ago. So, well, that's such a great story. Yeah. You think he's watching? Oh, he'll be watching. Well, then we want to send him congratulations on the newborn, right? Congrats, Colin Taylor, on your baby. (laughs) Very exciting. So you started this year at Massachusetts. How'd you wind up in Iowa? Um, Just some things I didn't, um, I don't really know how to say them on here, but they just didn't end up going the right way. And um, I'm glad I ended up here, though, like I was telling you. um, I feel way more comfortable here in the situation I'm in. Um, Been kicking better here and everything. So you know what a deuce is, right? That's when you kick the ball through the uprights in the final minute. Is this something you think about? Yeah, I had one in Mass, actually. Actually, against Bismarck, the, second, or the third game of the year, I had one against them uh, there in Bismarck. So, yeah, any time that presents itself, it's, it's full go. So it's a conscious decision. Yes, sir. It's, I mean, it's everything to do with the coach, you know, situational and everything. You don't want to give him the ball because if you don't hit it, I think the ball's at the 20. Um, and, you know, you don't want to give him a head start and possibly then get a field goal or even drive down the field to shorter field. Now, how about the four-point drop kick field goal? Are you do? Are you working on that? Oh, I can drop kick. I'm just waiting on them to do that. But um, we mess around with it here in practice once in a while. But I can drop kick pretty good, actually. Well, I look forward to seeing that. <laughs> we'll, we'll see if we ever do. But if we do, I'll I'll be sure to look up at you and point at you. I understand you have family coming in tonight, and the first time they've seen you play at home. How exciting is that for you? Very exciting. Um, always good to see um, family, obviously, here in the crowd. Um, especially my grandpa, he's, you know, the one that kind of, you know, raised me and just kind of, like we were saying, you know, two years old, he was the one pushing me to kick a, you know, soccer ball, but it ended up in this. But, um, you know, he gets always real emotional seeing me here and whatever I, whenever he sees me play. So it's always good to see him here. That's very cool. Final question for you. As you make the adjustment from outdoor football to indoor football, what's more difficult, place kicking or kickoffs? 
Um, at first it was place kicking, getting adjusted to the smaller goalposts, but now it's kickoffs to be honest with you because either the roof, you know, is either lower wherever we're playing. Here it's a little bit higher, but um, with the squibs and then having to get adjusted to like an onside or a high pooch or anything like that, but I'd say it's kickoffs now. Rock Chalk, Gabriel. Jayhawk, baby. All right, you got it. Gabriel Rui, the kicker for the Iowa Barnstormers, our halftime guest. More at halftime right after this. Mediacom is winning awards across the U.S., keeping you connected, keeping you safe, rising to the challenge, challenging the limits. Thanks to our award-winning employees, never settling, never backing down, always planning ahead, and always getting better. Mediacom is proud to be named 2021 U.S. Best Managed Company by Deloitte and The Wall Street Journal. Catch all the 2021 Iowa Barnstormer home games exclusively on MC22, your local sports programming leader. Each year, one in six Americans get sick due to a foodborne illness. People can get food poisoning from eating hot food that isn't kept hot, cold food that isn't kept cold, or old food that should be thrown out. If you get sick from eating food made outside your home, report that illness by calling 844-IOWA-SICK. Feeling queasy? Call. It's easy. 844-IOWASIC. 844-IOWASIC. You've got to feel it to believe it. Get extreme internet starting at $9.99 a month for one year. With fantastic speeds from 60 meg up to 1 gig. Dynamic streaming video. So real, you can feel it. Amplified in-home Wi-Fi and all the power you need to power it all. Get extreme internet starting at $9.99 a month for one year. Call 844-EXTREME-5. We're told by a 31-21 halftime lead over Bismarck. Iowa trying to snap a three-game losing streak, so big play. This is a big beam for Iowa. Absolutely, and I mean, guys came off the bus ready to play this game for sure. Came out fired up, tons of energy. And you can tell it so far. And we're happened. seeing on both sides of the football, both a lot of activity on both sides. Yeah, I mean, nobody's asleep. And, and I felt like a couple weeks ago when they played Green Bay, everybody was kind of slow, sluggish. Maybe coming off that bye week didn't have as much um for energy, but they made sure to kind of kick it in playoff gear so far tonight. Coming off another bye week, but you're right, there seems to be no rust this week. And yet, Bismarck is certainly not a team you can sleep on. Yeah, you can, and that's why it's very important for them to stay on top of this league like they have been so far. Barnstorm Norman's done great so far and they've got the one turnover, but, you know, that, that may come back to help them later on in the game if they can't get any more stop, stops. Let's take a look at the first half highlights, and again, the Barnstormers scored very quickly. They got Daquan Neal on a great pass there to Persons, and, and Daquan Neal has looked sharp all night so far. Of course, you got a big time play here by Tony Jones. I'm sure Coach Moss is, is happy to have him back in the lineup and gets a strip and walks into the end zone untouched. You got a great pass there. Hardly gets wide open. I mean, they find their way in the end zone and you really can't count Bismarck out. They're a great team and Iowa comes right back down and answers with Cavallo on a nice tough run there. Get into the end zone. Bismarck answers right back with, with Rankin on a run of his own to come in. They've been trading blows back and forth. That's why it's very important to Barnstorm to keep pressure there and capitalize on all their, uh, all their chances. 
Thompson makes a great cut and gets north, gets right downhill and scores a great touchdown there. Barely gets touched. There's another great pass there. Former Barnstormer Harvey goes up, makes a great play in the end zone. And this may turn out to be a significant field goal. I believe so. I mean, you know, Bismarck comes out, gets the ball in the second half, and they have an opportunity to score. Uh, outside of that first turnover there, the Barnstormers haven't really stopped Bismarck there. So that was, that would be a big field goal for them. So as you take a look at the numbers, anything really jump out at you? I think one thing that dead jumps out of me is third down conversions by the Barnstormers. Yeah, absolutely. They're four for five. And I mean, granted, Bismarck is two for three, but Barnstormers have been very efficient so far tonight. And that's going to be a big key to their success. And you see, very clean game, only three penalties called in the first half. So at the half, Iowa with a almost must win to stay in the playoff picture, holds a 31-21 lead over the Bismarck Bucks. We'll be back with second half action right after this. Extreme Home Phone. More people are adding it, and here's why. At $4.99 a month for a year, it costs practically nothing. And you have an instant backup if your cell phone is ever lost, stolen, dead, or broken. It's also a reliable way to reach someone at home, like your kids or a babysitter. And if there's ever an emergency, it's a phone people know where to find. Doesn't that seem worth it for less than five bucks a month? To get hooked up, call 844-EXTREME-5. Catch all the 2021 Iowa Barnstormer home games exclusively on MC22, your local sports programming leader. Each year, one in six Americans get sick due to a foodborne illness. People can get food poisoning from eating hot food that isn't kept hot, cold food that isn't kept cold, or old food that should be thrown out. If you get sick from eating food made outside your home, report that illness by calling 844-IOWA-SICK. Feeling queasy? Call. It's easy. 844-IOWASIC. 844-IOWASIC. Bye. Catch all the 2021 Iowa Barnstormer home games exclusively on MC22, your local sports programming leader. You gotta feel it to believe it. Get extreme internet starting at $9.99 a month for one year. With fantastic speeds from 60 meg up to one gig. Dynamic streaming video, so real you can feel it. Amplified in-home Wi-Fi and all the power you need to power it all. Get extreme internet starting at $9.99 a month for one year. Call 844-EXTREME-5. They brought their cowbells tonight. They brought the youngsters out and everybody having a good time right now with the home team. The Barnstormers up 31 to 21. Another home game next week and it's the final home game of the regular season for the Barnstormers. 705 kick against Sioux Falls. Third meeting of the year against Sioux Falls and that game will also have huge playoff implications for both teams. So if you've not been out to see the Barnstormers, just one more chance in the regular season, hopefully a playoff home game, but that's well down the road to be determined. Absolutely. I mean, the most important thing for the Barnstormers is to, to win here on out. Take each game one game at a time and try to get a win to help themselves get that spot in the playoffs this year. So kickoff coverage has been an adventure for both teams tonight. Let's see if that changes for the Barnstormers in the second half. Is Gabriel Rui, who you know ended the first half of a 29-yard field goal, prepares to kick off. Strayhorn and Hendrick are back. This is Strayhorn. And he is dragged down by Tony Jones, but just a jersey. Jones made a nice open field tackle. Got a hold of that jersey, wouldn't let go. That is a great open field tackle by Jones. He was falling the other way and somehow 
maintains control of that jersey. It just kind of goes to talk about grip strength right there. I mean, he literally pulled him down by his jersey. So great open field tackle by Tony Jones. Meanwhile, Strayhorn is saying, where, where happened to those tearaway jerseys they used to have, right? <laughs> it made it a lot easier to get away. It certainly did. So here come the Bismarck Bucks. There are the numbers in the first half for Allen, as you see. Didn't throw long very often, but had a very consistent first half. He's back to throw now. Forced out of the pocket, but has an open receiver. That is Kerrigan. Kerrigan makes the catch at midfield. So with pressure, he was able to throw off his back foot and still find Mike Kerrigan for a big gain of almost 20 yards. Yeah, the Barnstormers are still kind of they're taking a page out of the, the Bismarck's book there. So they were dropping six in coverage and Looks like they had Tony come in and add a little later, but it gave him a little bit too much time. He was able to find Kerrigan there on the sideline. So the second play of the second half for Bismarck will be in Iowa territory after the 15-yard pass completion. Tari Boyd up over the ball at center. Allen hands to Harvey. Harvey to the outside to the 20-yard line. Ran a long way to get four yards, and it'll bring up second and six. Great tackle there, Mama, Mama McClure, uh, pushing him right out of bounds there on the sideline. John McClure third on the Barnstormers and tackled with 42 this season. Also has an interception. Again, this is the third matchup between these two teams. The first matchup here in Des Moines on May 29th, won by Iowa 49-43. But on June 12th at Bismarck, totally different story. Bucks prevailed by 30, 53-22. So this match number three, and it gets, carries playoff implications for both. Handoff once again in the backfield, and called down right at the line of scrimmage on the play is Rankin, as Justin Rankin just could not get to the outside, well contained by the Barnstormers who strung it out, and Jones led the charge. Yeah, I mean, they might have got away with a little hold up front. I feel like that play might have gotten stopped a little bit earlier, but, you know, it's a defensive line. You got to keep playing through it. And, again, you got Tony Jones just stepping up and just making plays left and right. So, another good tackle by him. Jones, the team's leading tackler, number nine, played at Texas Tech. Had a great career at Texas Tech. Had eight sacks and 14 tackles for loss in just two years with the Red Raiders. Big third down call coming up for Bismarck. Allen to the end zone looking for Harvey. And it is almost picked off by Dorian Walker. Walker breaks up the play, forces the fourth down for Bismarck on their first possession of the half. Guys, he read it perfectly, broke on the ball. that looked nice, just could not complete it. But still gets credited for a PBU. A good third down stop. So see what happens here on this fourth down. But not much pressure there on Allen. And Delivers the ball, hangs it up there a little bit too long, and Walker almost walks away with an interception. Well, they have a good field goal kicker, but that's not going to be the decision for Rod Miller. They're going to go for it on fourth down. They need six. Allen, high snap from center. Again, long to the end zone, and that ball is broken up. Well, or hauled in. Hauled in, excuse me, for a touchdown. Andre Williams. Looked like for a moment he might not have come down with it, but he did. It's a great catch by Andre Williams in the left corner of the end zone. Watch this. Yeah, that was a great catch there. Allen just kind of, it's another one of those timing routes. Gives the receiver a little bit of time and a little bit of misjudgment there. And Allen is able, I'm sorry, Williams is able to secure it there off the wall. Keep that thing alive. So Andre Williams makes his sixth touchdown reception of the season to make it a 31-27 ball game. And Cody Barber will attempt the point after, unless we get a challenge. We are gonna get a challenge. Les Moss has thrown the challenge. Well, it looked like it came up in the air for a moment after the initial hit. And so, he, again, you heard referee Jim Wojciechowicz explain that there was a thought the ball hit the wall first. And certainly, Jalen Moore, linebacker, he's waving his hands back and forth, indicating no, and we're about to find out. Yeah, that's a that's a tough call there. I don't know if that angle gives it to you right away. Still, he almost has 
has the ball secured, but it's that's a tough bang bang call. And what Brenda's seeing is what the officials are seeing. You know, we're not seeing it on TV till now, but here it is. And again, the wall kind of gets in the way of, of making a clean call there, doesn't it? Absolutely. Which would make it difficult to call it inconclusive. So let's get another look at it. Into his hands, secured it against the wall. Look like six to me there. What do yeah, you think? Yeah, I, I think it's going to be six. I don't think that's enough to overturn it either. So his hands are still in front of the ball, between the ball and the wall. So I think they still get the six on this one. And that's, the touchdown will stand. That's great concentration, too, by Williams. And now the former barnstormer, Cody Barber, on to attempt the point after. Barber's had a terrific career, and considering the fact he is virtually blind in his left eye from a childhood accident. And he's been able to still make a nice job kicking till that moment. As the Barnstormers able to prevent the point after. So Bismarck scores on their first possession to make it a four-point game early in the second half. 31-27, Iowa with the lead. Mediacom's reliable, powerful internet service has never been more important. We're actively hiring technicians, customer service representatives, and other key roles to keep our communities connected. Mediacom has been providing employees with the power to succeed for over 20 years. Text Mediacom to 97211 to apply and learn more about our full-time positions with generous benefits. Don't wait. Virtual interviews are happening now. Join the Mediacom team. We're a family as much as we are a business. Catch all the 2021 Iowa Barnstormer home games exclusively on MC22, your local sports programming leader. Each year, one in six Americans get sick due to a foodborne illness. People can get food poisoning from eating hot food that isn't kept hot, cold food that isn't kept cold, or old food that should be thrown out. If you get sick from eating food made outside your home, report that illness by calling 844-IOWA-SICK. Feeling queasy? Call. It's easy. 844-IOWASIC. 844-IOWASIC. 42 left to play in the third quarter. Iowa with a 31-27 lead. You see assistant coach Jason Simpson, the former Barnstormer. The dance cam was on, and Sterling Clark, the former Barnstormer, performing before his former coach, and uh, he got into it. That guy got into it as well. And everybody's having a good time as the Barnstormers and Bismarck putting on quite a show. Here's the kickoff by Barber. It's a short kickoff. Cavallo picks it up, gets through the first wave of tacklers and the second, and carries down to the 19-yard line. Ivan Cavallo with a short kick return, able to get the Barnstormers' excellent field position. He has a good reaction there, grabs the ball, and just takes off and gets what he can get and ends up getting them on the other side of the field. Cavallo, really an outstanding athlete, was a state wrestling champion in high school. Uh, interesting guy, went to a Holy Cross for three years, St. Anselm for a year. First time out against Bismarck, he rushed for 85 yards and a couple of touchdowns. There's Daquan Neal's numbers tonight as really balanced, throwing and running well. This is a design play for Neal to run, and he carries to the 14-yard line. I mean, the Barnstormers have been very smart with their play call and so far. You know, the runs have been very successful, and you kind of see it right here. Nice quarterback run there by DeQuan Neal, picking up a quick five yards and kind of cut the sticks in half. Coach really wanted to focus on staying in front of the sticks and not getting in third and long situations, and so far they're 
executing on that game plan. Devon Keith made the tackle. Haven't had a chance to talk a lot about him tonight, which tells you the Barnstormers are containing him well, but he is one of the quicker defensive linemen in the IFL. Nailed from the 14-yard line on second down. Handoff fake to Williams. Neil keeps. Penalty markers down. Neil will go down at the six-yard line. Flag thrown in the backfield, and it looks like it's going to come up against Iowa. And then they, the ball loose at the end of the play, and it looked like they might have called a fumble. Well, let's see. As Jim Wojciechowicz will tell us. Holding number 71 on the offense. That penalty is declined. First down. So it was a fumble at the end of the play. See what happens. You got a shaky mesh there. Neil keeps the ball and runs a little bit there. And looks like he got uh, a big strip that time. Terrific play. It gets by the ball stripped out. Hendrick Harper, who just signed this week. So there's the first Barnstormer turnover, and it gives the Bismarck Butts a chance to take their first lead if they can convert. Possibly fumbled by Neal, but a really good play by Harper. Rankin missed the catch. Rankin dragged down by Jones. He could not get upfield at all and winds up gaining maybe two on the play. Yeah, that's a great open field tackle there by Tony Jones. He's the guy is really all over the place. Recognized the play, breaks up on the ball. I honestly thought it was going to be a bigger hit than that, but I mean, he makes sure he gets the tackle, uh, and stops ranking before he gets that momentum going. So a second down coming up after a short game. Second down and eight. Good look at Tony Jones, who is uh, playing an outstanding game tonight. The leading. Tackler on the season for the Barnstormer. Handoff goes to Rankin and he is buried immediately. He is stopped, make it a Harper, or excuse me, make it a Harvey. He is stopped back to the four yard line. So it brings up a very important third down for the Bucks. Yeah, that's a big time stop there by Bartley. Doesn't get fooled by that action and does not allow Harvey to get outside of him and makes a great tackle for loss there. Sets up a huge third and long. Up front, turnover, sorry. up front, the Barnstormers are bigger along with Bartlett. They've done an outstanding job tonight. And also there is Jayshon Washington. They're the front three for Iowa. Third and long, Allen is back. Allen steps up in the pocket, now throws, and the pass is caught for a first down. Big play to Raheem Harvey, who's having a big night for the Bucks, and he's able to move the sticks on third and long. Yeah, unfortunately, the Barnstormers did not get a stop, and Harvey is kind of dialed in on his old team there, finds the open open spot in his zone and sits there, and Allen delivers a good strike. 14-yard gain on a fourth down play. So the ball now at the 18-yard line and a fresh set of downs for the Bismarck Butts, who are looking for their third win in their last four games. But crisscross in the backfield, Rankin this time gets the call, and Rankin is fielded immediately by Kenton Bartlett. So again, it's a loss of a couple of yards, and I was run defense has just been outstanding. They've been really good getting off the ball, seeing those, uh, recognizing the runs right now, and getting right down the field. So it's another great stop by Bartlett. Still so ball to 17 yard line now on second down and 12, make it 11. Allen gets the play call. The offensive coordinator for the Bismarcks is Corey Roth. He was the former head coach of the Quad City Steam Wheelers. Now an assistant for Rod Miller. Rankin to the 20. Rankin breaks the tackle, gets outside, and gets to the 24 yard line. On second down, he winds up gaining about seven or eight on the play and that'll bring up a third and short for the Bucks. Bismarck is getting right back into their offense. It's slow, methodical, taking their time with the ball and kind of milking the clock. And that's something they do very well. They had almost a seven minute drive earlier tonight. And again, they're taking their time here and they've got a third down call coming up and third and fourth. 
There's Corey Ross, the former Steam Wheelers coach from the Quad Cities, now the offensive coordinator for Rod Miller and the Bismarck Bucks. Allen loops it over the middle, cast caught in midfield for no gain. Corrigan hauled it in, and Jones hauled him down immediately. Sony Jones again, another big, uh, big hit right across the middle. Doesn't seem like the receivers are too safe on anything coming across the middle because Tony Jones is covering and flying. And so now it's fourth down. And a moment ago, the Bismarck Bucks completed a 14-yard pass on a fourth down call. Now, once again, they're called to complete a play for a first down as they stand at the 24-yard line of Iowa. Fourth down and two yards to go, and it's a long two at that. Allen wants to throw for it on fourth down, and again, he's going to throw long, and the pass is incomplete. And the Barnstormers, after the fumble by Daquan Neal, have held. That's a big-time stop there by the Barnstormers defense. Great response by them. Up until that point, I don't think the Barnstormers had a stop on fourth down. So it's a great way to react after that turnover there by your offense and give them another chance to put some points on the board. Kyrie McLean covering for Iowa. He's one of the newcomers on the team this year from Louisville in the dispersion draft. And so the Barnstormers dodge a bullet and take over at the 24-yard line. So Iowa able to escape a turnover. And so, so far, two turnovers, one apiece. But Bismarck wounded by theirs. Iowa able to get away with one. Neal goes back into the shotgun with Cavallo to his left. Wants to run it, goes to the left side and gets to the 21-yard line. He gets five on first down. Neal is very explosive there. and I mean, he gets in there and those gaps close really quick and they are really reaching for those balls, gunning for those turnovers. Barnstormer started off the first half that way. Now Bismarck is really, really raking at that ball. So hopefully the Barnstormers are keeping it high and tight and they can maintain control so they don't lose anymore. And during this three-game losing streak, turnovers have been an issue for the Barnstormers who have lost seven turnovers in the three-game streak, trying to turn that around tonight. Here's the second down call for Daquan Neal. The pitch comes to Cavallo. He's got a hole. 15, 10. He's going to the end zone. Touchdown, Barnstormers. Elon Cavallo with his second touchdown run of the night. I'll tell you what, the Barnstormers get outside. I was I was looking for the flag there. There's no handkerchiefs on the ground. It's a great moving by the offensive line, but even better move. Sorry, better vision by Cavallo there. Cavallo the from 21 yards. The offensive line gets great blocking up front. They kicked out. Your big time defensive end there, uh, Keith and Cavallo was able to cut it up inside and practically go in untouched. Gabriel Rui on for the point after. You listen to the halftime interview, you know his grandfather was a big influence and helped raise him. He's in the stands tonight for the first time in Iowa to watch him play. And he's got to be enjoying the performance of his grandson, who's perfect in PATs and has kicked a big field goal that Iowa leads by 11 at 38 to 27. Mediacom is winning awards across the U.S., keeping you connected, keeping you safe, rising to the challenge, challenging the limits. Thanks to our award-winning employees, never settling, never backing down, always planning ahead, and always getting better. Mediacom is proud to be named 2021 U.S. Best Managed Company by Deloitte and The Wall Street Journal. Week at Iowa's number one vacation destination, Okaboji. Get to Okaboji this week, all summer long, and it's only on MC22. Each year, one in six Americans get sick due to a foodborne illness. 
People can get food poisoning from eating hot food that isn't kept hot, cold food that isn't kept cold, or old food that should be thrown out. If you get sick from eating food made outside your home, report that illness by calling 844-IOWA-SICK. Feeling queasy? Call. It's easy. 844-IOWA-SIC. 844-IOWA-SICK. Takes a 38-27 lead over Bismarck on a Cavallo 21-yard touchdown, a final from Massachusetts. The Pirates have won their sixth in a row and improved to nine and three, knocking off Green Bay 50 to 33. More importantly for the Barnstormers, it drops the Blizzard down to five and seven. The Barnstormers coming in at four and five, so Iowa, they hold on and win tonight, certainly have a better look at their playoff picture. Meanwhile, here's a kickoff return out to almost midfield by Strayhorn, or excuse me, by Hendrick, he was back there with Stray Horn with Hendrick on the return that time. And so the Bucks will take over at the 24-yard line of Iowa with 2.10 left to play in the third quarter. But going back to that last Iowa touchdown, how significant was that after they turned the ball over? I mean, it's all about momentum. Uh, the defense stepped up in a major way. They responded to their, their that fumble there, or I'm sorry, that strip by the quarterback. And, they never, they bend it a little bit, but they never broke. So it helps the offense out a lot. Offense has a lot of, a lot of trust in the guys and they come out and put some points on the board to help the team out some more. Kenyatta Allen with the snap. Takes the throw, wants to run and is pushed down by Kenton Bartlett. Bartlett. Didn't get a lot on him, but he got enough on him to knock him off his feet. That is, that's three negative plays in a row for Bartlett. I mean, that's, that's awesome by him. Allen thought he had a lot of room and started dancing too much. And good things happen when the D-line runs to the ball. And that's proof in the put in there for, uh, for Bartlett. Bartlett out of Portland State. Was hurt early in the year, so really he's just come on and played more significantly later in the year. And boy, tonight he has done a terrific job. Jones has been great on defense as well. The handoff goes to Rankin. Rankin tries to get to midfield, and he's going to be stopped. Maybe got to the 25-yard line, but it'll be a short gain of maybe three, and it'll bring up a third and long. This Barnstormers run defense is all over anything that Bismarck is trying to do today. I'm not going to make it easy for him tonight. So once again, the Bucks need to come up with a third down and long conversion. Third down and nine. Rankin will come as a wide receiver to the near side. It'll be an empty backfield. The other three wide receivers go to the right of Kenyatta Allen. Allen again, the fifth quarterback Bismarck has used this year. He looked long, nothing going. Bar penalty markers down, and he goes down at the 20 yard line. The good turf monsters out there again. Yep, he got bit that time and went down untouched and a flag down. We usually see a hold, and that's what you're going to see here. That penalty is declined. Hold against the former Barnstormer, Sterling Clark. And so the Barnstormers, big opportunity here. So the Barnstormers try to make a playoff run and three quarters have gone by. Iowa leads by 11, 38-27. Mediacom's reliable, powerful internet service has never been more important. We're actively hiring technicians, customer service representatives, and other key roles to keep our communities connected. Mediacom has been providing employees with the power to succeed for over 20 years. Text Mediacom to 97211 to apply and learn more about our full-time positions with generous benefits. Don't wait. Virtual interviews are happening now. Join the Mediacom team. We're a family as much as we are a business.
Catch all the 2021 Iowa Barnstormer home games exclusively on MC22, your local sports programming leader. Each year, one in six Americans get sick due to a foodborne illness. People can get food poisoning from eating hot food that isn't kept hot, cold food that isn't kept cold, or old food that should be thrown out. If you get sick from eating food made outside your home, report that illness by calling 844-IOWA-SICK. Feeling queasy? Call. It's easy. 844-IOWA-SIC. 844-IOWA-SICK. Uh, he's reliving the glory days, isn't he? Ah. Nice throw. Nice throw, yes. He got the job done. And the Barnstormers trying to get the job done, leading 38-27. As we go to the fourth quarter, you mentioned momentum a moment ago. Right now on the Barnstormers' side, big play. Although it's a big fourth down here for Bismarck. Fourth down and 14 yards to go to start the fourth quarter. It's a field goal try of long range by Barber. It's going to go wide left. And so the Barnstormers have held. The field goal fails. And Iowa, with an 11-point lead, has the football. That's another good stop there by the Barnstormers' defense. I mean, you force them to kick a long field goal, and chances go high after that. And unfortunately, uh, Bismarck walks away empty-handed, and the Barnstormers take another shot at putting some more points on the board, adding to this lead. Dequan Neal having a really good night, both, again, managing the game well, throwing it well, and relying on his running backs, and a variety of running backs have carried the football tonight. The wide receivers deployed as runners often. It's been very successful mix for Iowa offensively. Yeah, I mean, it, they look a lot more comfortable on offense this week as, as compared to two weeks ago against Green Bay. So until they've been working and put some work in the past week there, and it's starting to show out tonight. From the five-yard line, Iowa will start this drive. Fake to Cavallo. Neal keeps the football, throws, and the pass is caught, and the penalty marker is down. Dayton Person made the catch. He scored the first touchdown tonight for the Barnstormers, but we have to check out the flag. Legal contact, number two on the defense. That penalty and the declined. Barnstormers will the take the, the game, decline the down. penalty. It's a first down out to the 16-yard line. Through three quarters, Neal 5 of 11, 81 yards and a touchdown. And on the ground, 10 carries, 41 yards. Marshall do a nice little fake there and end up taking the defense to the uh, to their left, to our right. And gives persons just enough time to come open and Daquan to deliver a nice strike. Daquan Neal, who struggled mightily against Bismarck last time out, really having a good night tonight. And this may be a false start, judging on where the flag was thrown and how quickly it was thrown. There is no foul on the play for three receivers in motion. Only 10 men were moving. Remains first down. So. No foul on the play. No foul on the like. play. Uh, they say th only three receivers were. I have to think that one over for a while. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't quite hear it all. So we'll just. Just call it a mulligan. With just yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no harm, no foul. First down remains at the 16-yard line. The pitch comes wide to Cavallo, turns a corner and ducks his head and gets down to the 20-yard line. Branch in on the stop for the Bismarck Bucks. And the Barnstormers now face the second down and six after a four-yard game. Barnstormers are doing a really good job with their run game so far today, and I think that, you know, obviously helps sets up the pass for these guys. That's something that uh, they had struggled with a couple of weeks ago, and with the bye week last week, obviously have things work out. Williams comes wide to the left side. Thompson wide to the left. The throw is to Person once again. Tackle missed. He gets to the 25-yard line. He's brought down there by Malik Duncan. It's quite After the move there by Carlin Person. missed the tackle. It's quite the move there by Person here. Catch the ball and spin, almost spins out of that tackle. Third down and short for the Barnstormers with 12 and a half minutes left in regulation. Barnstormers need three for a first down. 
Cavallo goes in motion to the near side. The pitch on the far side goes to Cavallo. Cavallo to the 20. Has a first down and 20 more as they get to the 18-yard line of the Bucks. So the Barnstormers now moving the ball effectively, trying to open their biggest lead of the game. They did lead early 14 to nothing, but if they score here, they'll have their biggest lead. So what a nice option play there. Makes the defense, uh, defensive end bite up on there. And a nice quick pitch to Cavallo, and he does the rest. Picks up a nice first down. Darian Jackson, once again, the tackler for Bismarck. At the 19-yard line on first down. Empty backfield. Coming across to take the handoff. It's Cavallo, same play, other side. Same result. Good gain to the 10-yard line. They really got this run game dialed in so far right now. Taking their time, walking down the field. They're actually the ones being slow and methodic right now. It's a little different look there. I mean, the Barnstorm was running a nice, simple stretch play there, and Cavallo gets right down the field for another eight yards, eight, nine yards. Kirk Kelly, number 71, the center, leading the blocking on that play. And it's the second and two at the 11. And off once again to Thompson. Thompson tripped up at the 10, drives forward to the 9, will be close to that first down. Depends on where they mark the football. The Barnstormers, yeah, using the whole field now and running the ball well, side to side. They're going to call it down after a gain of one. So it's third down in the yard. Thompson tries to get north and south, but that was a great open field tackle there to keep him short there at the first down. Zarell Hendrick on the stop for Bismarck. Third and one. Cavallo turned to the outside and is going to lose yardage on the play and be tackled back at the 13. So now it's fourth down in decision time for Les Moss. First down try or field, and actually he made the decision already. Here comes the field goal kicker, Gabriel Rui, who has been outstanding since joining the Barnstormers about four games ago you have a kicker like Rui he's been you know consistent successful he's been hot tonight yeah, I'd bring him on out and let's get these extra points here a moment ago uh, at the end of the first half it was a 29 yard field goal this will be a 28 yard attempt with person the snapper and Neil the holder And the ball down, the kick line drive style up, and that kick is no good off to the left. So Rui misses for the first time tonight after he hit a field goal and was successful in all his point afters. So Bismarck Bucks get a hold. They got the football with Iowa leading 38-27. year, one in six Americans get sick due to a foodborne illness. People can get food poisoning from eating hot food that isn't kept hot, cold food that isn't kept cold, or old food that should be thrown out. If you get sick from eating food made outside your home, report that illness by calling 844-IOWA-SICK. Feeling queasy? Call. It's easy. 844-IOWA-SIC. 844-IOWA-SICK. This week at Iowa's number one vacation destination, Okaboji. Get to Okaboji this week, all summer long, and it's only on MC22. Stop. They've got the football at the five-yard line. 9:24 left in regulation, an 11-point Barnstormer lead at 38 to 27. 
be really good to see how the defense responds here. Responded really well after the turnover down the other end. So see what they do here on this drive coming out. Fumble of the exchange. Allen able to grab the football and fall on it and go forward, trying to wrestle it away from him for the Barnstormers, Tyrone Cromwell. And that time, the Bucks got away with what could have been a catastrophic turnover. Absolutely got a lucky bounce here. Looks like he held it in there too long, and guys, Bartlett almost came up with the turnover there. But everything is, is very costly and heightened right now, so I'm sure they're kind of on edge over there, so hopefully they can get it together. As it was, the play gained three yards to bring up second down and seven. Allen forced out of the pocket, throws against the grain, pass caught at the 20-yard line. Great grab on the play by Johan Bird. You can see Jalen Moore trying to get that uh, get that big hit back there on Bird. Bird, not a lot of playing time this year with Bismarck, but of injuries in the wide receiver core giving him the opportunity and he makes his first catch of the night and so a first down at the 20 yard line again bad snap Allen got it short able to pick it up off the bounce throws to the end zone and throws it away in essence he had a receiver in the vicinity Kerrigan Kerrigan was well covered that time by McLean and he basically threw it away and so isn't that strange after all the pretty decent center quarterback exchanges now we're seeing some issues all on this one drive fourth quarter when it when it really matters the most I think the guys will be more locked in here this late in the game Jay Sean Washington the barnstormer who was down being assisted off the field When I look at Jay Sean Washington, I feel really old because his grandfather played for the Packers, Alden Roche, and I remember the name. Oh, wow. This means your season. Not old, oh. just season. That's all. Thanks. It looks like he had some sort of non contact injury there. Foot got stuck on his turn and he's up falling down, but he does walk off on his own power, so hopefully there's nothing too, too tough for him. Second down and 10 at the 20 yard line for Kenyana Allen, who we mentioned has played football in four different countries. He throws and completes the pass at the 19 yard line. Good grab by Bird. So Bird now twice on this drive has caught passes. Three year pro out of Rochester Community College, played in the CIF with Salina. His first year with the Bucks. Been quiet all night and had uh, two quick grabs here this fourth quarter. Bird was the guy who uh, had been all league when they were in the CIF, then tried to commute to Minnesota, couldn't work that out. And that pass complete to the seven yard line. So Bismarck comes right back after the missed field goal to bring it into the red zone. Yeah, they are not wasting any time and Allen is showing his arm strength there and squeezes that ball in that, that tight window gets it to it gets it to the spot the receiver can only make the catch there that's the fifth catch of the night for Raheem Harvey Allen forced out of the pocket fires to the right sideline fires it away bird was in the vicinity but again just a matter of getting rid of the football because bird drew double the coverage yeah, he did. He's been uh, he's been kind of a main target for Allen on his drive. So trying to make sure they keep him out. And I'm sure they would be looking for Harvey now this close to the end zone. Corey Ross, the offensive coordinator, coordinator making the call for Kenyatta Allen. Second down and seven call coming up. Bird wide to the right side. Fake pitch, Allen runs it up the middle, Allen runs into the end zone and actually winds up leaping into the end zone for a Bismarck touchdown to make a 38-33. That's a great play call there by Bismarck. They've had all that run action away and forcing the Barnstormers to go chase it and that opens the middle wide open and man coverage and 
Backs are turned, and Allen walks right in untouched. I think they might be going for the two-point conversion, having missed the PAT a moment ago. And that's exactly what is going to happen, it would appear. Yes, they are. Two-point try by Allen. Bates, the pitch. It's secured by Kerrigan, but he doesn't get to the end zone. So the two-point conversion fails. Yeah. And the score remains Iowa 38 and Bismarck 33. Yeah. Again, the run defense does the job. Absolutely. If they don't make a stop right here, it comes up to a three-point ball game. And, I mean, the run defense has been stout all night. And there they are again, showing up when it really matters and makes another big stop. So in a tight ball game, that's a failed two-point conversion and a missed one-point conversion by Bismarck. That could become a factor down the stretch. Barnstormers hold a five-point lead, and we are down to four minutes and 39 seconds to play because of that very lengthy drive. Yeah, they took their time. They've been slow and methodical. I mean, that's typically what Bismarck has done. They've been holding the ball here. They were doing that the uh, first half of the ball game, and... I and mean, they've still got a uh, plus 12 there, 12 minutes about on the barnstorm so far. So both teams with three timeouts remaining. Yeah, very deceiving in terms of time of possession because Bismarck has a 10 minute lead in time of possession over Iowa. But Iowa scored quickly and Bismarck, as you said, has scored methodically. That drive for almost four minutes. Again, both teams, three timeouts remaining as we come down to the stretch. Sure the Barnstormers are thinking onside kick here. Got to secure the kick. They're lined up that way. Williams is deep. Cody Barber approaches and kicks the low line drive. Williams gathers it in. Runs into his own man and will go down shy of the 20-yard line. Dorian Walker trying to set him a block, and Williams ran up his back. Yeah, it almost looked like Williams was expecting something different, but. Nice security, though, on the tough one to field. Yeah, he secures that good knuckleball and didn't make a cut, but that's all right. At least they got the ball and no fumbles. And Give your team a chance to march the ball back down the field. Neal now 7 of 13 through the air for 96 yards. And on the ground, 10 carries, 41 yards. So very productive night for him. Cavallo and Neal, little trouble with the exchange. Cavallo able to almost take it away from Neal and hold on to it against a possible turnover. Got kind of lucky on that one there. It looks like uh, Neil left it in that bread basket a little longer than he wanted to and tried to pull it out, but uh, luckily they were able to keep hold of the ball there. That could have been very costly here this late in the ball game. Cavallo finally is able to wrestle it away from him. It's good for a former state wrestling champion to do that. And it was very important to Barnstormers keep the football. Yeah, you definitely don't want to lose the ball this deep in their own territory. Second and 10 at the 18-yard line. Neal delivers incomplete. Williams, the intended receiver at midfield, but well covered on the play by Zarell Hendrick. And so the Barnstormers face a third down and 10. Iowa 5 of 7 on the third down conversions tonight. And if Iowa comes out with a win, that will be a big number. Absolutely. Yeah, staying on the upside of that, only having two plays where you didn't get the first down there. Could be big. We'll see what they do on this third down. Let's go around. On the other hand, Bismarck just 3 of 7 on third down. Fake to Cavallo. Neal. Kind of floated the football back to Cavallo. Cavallo trying to make something out of nothing, and he's able to turn it into positive yardage. But that was a very costly mistake almost by Iowa, and now the Barnstormers have to convert on fourth down. The Barnstormers are getting lucky bounce after lucky bounce after lucky bounces drive. 
That was a fumble. It looks like there by Neil and Cavalli was right there, heads up play, way to pick up the ball and, and get downhill as quick as you can, pick up whatever you can. So it helps this team out a lot. You know, so, after playing so flawlessly for so long, so it'll be a field goal try by Rui on this fourth down attempt. This will be a 45-yard field goal by the Barnstormers place kicker. Neal is the holder. Again, person the long snapper. Rui from 42 has got the leg to do it. It's a bullet, and that kick is through. A terrific 42-yard field goal by Rui. And the Barnstormers really needed to get some separation. They get one with a minute 30 seconds to play. They go up to an eight-point lead at 41 to 33. How big was that? Oh, wow. He came right out and made up for that missed field goal earlier. So locks himself back in and helps his team put some more points on the board. He had plenty of leg in this one. Plenty. Ah, nothing. Nothing to it, he said. Now a little bit of little bit of shimmy shake there. Right back over to Coach Ross there. He is <laughs> him and the coach are having just a little bit of an exchange of words there. And if you joined us late with time running out in the first half, twice Bismarck tried to freeze him before he kicked a field goal. And that's when that little by play started. Yeah, Rui's just letting him know he's not easily rattled. So now we're down to 90 seconds. Both teams, three timeouts remaining. So the Barnstormer defense, a lot to accomplish here. If they can come up with one more stop, they should be able to secure a victory, and that would be the end of a three-game losing streak and bring them right back to the 500 mark and facing a Sioux City team that's also desperate in the playoff hunt. Boy, we haven't said that about Sioux City maybe ever before. Yeah, that, that's probably a long time coming. I know they've been successful successful for so long, but, you know, if the Barnstormers can pull this off, that'll make for quite the showdown for next week. Isaiah Strayhorn is the deep man. A low line drive kick will go to Strayhorn. He has trouble picking it up. It does. Comes out. Barnstormers. Trying to pursue him, but the field opens up and he may go all the way. And finally, written down at the last moment by Jalen Moore. There was a very big play by the special team for the Bucks and a very tough one for the Barnstormers. Yeah, that's a great return there. I mean, fumble the staff a little bit, but he gets outside and they set a great wall for him and the rest is straight on. But great hustle there by Moore to get back and to make the tackle there to save that touchdown to give his defense a chance to make a stop down here. So the ball eight yards away, and now the Barnstormers need to really tighten up defensively and force the Bucks to take some time. A touchdown and a two-point conversion would tie it. Allen floats it to the end zone, Raheem Harvey, the intended receiver, he can't hang on. He had the ball in his hands, and he kind of claps his hands together saying, oh, that could have had that one. We're down to the one-minute warning. Iowa trying to hang on as they leave this mark, 41 to 33. Mediacom is winning awards across the U.S., keeping you connected, keeping you safe, rising to the challenge, challenging the limits. Thanks to our award-winning employees, never settling, never backing down, always planning ahead, and always getting better. Mediacom is proud to be named 2021 U.S. Best Managed Company by Deloitte and The Wall Street Journal. Each year, one in six Americans get sick due to a foodborne illness. People can get food poisoning from eating hot food that isn't kept hot, cold food that isn't kept cold, or old food that should be thrown out. If you get sick from eating food made outside your home, report that illness by calling 844-IOWA-SICK. Feeling queasy? Call. It's easy. 844-IOWA-SIC. 844-IOWA-SICK.
Catch all the 2021 Iowa Barnstormer home games exclusively on MC22, your local sports programming leader. Oh, for Bismarck, a 42-yard kick return by Strayhorn set them up in the red zone. Bismarck trailing Iowa by eight, exactly a minute left to play. Allen, screen pass to Rankin, and he's buried. The Barnstormers got to him quickly with Jalen Moore leading the charge, and Malik McLean was also there. Kyrie McLean was also there. You know, Tony Jones did a really good job of, of recognizing this play and kind of dialing in on it early. And was able to break up two on that and, and make the first contact to help slow him down. Tony's been all over the place. This game. He really has been. Has been a terrific tackler. It's just his had great presence. Been credited so far with seven. Make that another assisted tackle. So a total of ten tackles. Seven unassisted and three assisted tackles and a sack for Tony Jones tonight. So the ball placed down at the 12-yard line where it's third down and goal on the loss on the play of five. Again, both teams holding on to their timeouts, 53 seconds left in regulation. Barnstormer's front line put good pressure on Allen on the last two plays. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the guys are starting to turn it up a notch. I and mean, it's necessary if they want to advance to the playoffs. Allen tackled as he tries to throw. He was hit. A penalty marker, I believe that's not a penalty marker, an orange flag. It's just, just somebody's jersey. He says uh, their handkerchief is down. That was an orange marker. So no penalty on the play. And the ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. There was a receiver in the area, so there's no intentional grounding. Fourth down. Okay, so it actually was a flag, even though I was looking at the drop towel, but the point is no intentional grounding. So, it comes down to fourth down with just 36 seconds remaining. I mean, the Barnstormers front is putting on pressure, and that's Bartlett again, beating his man there on the inside and, and making another play there on Allen. Diggers, Washington up front, done a terrific job along with Bartlett. And Kenton Bartlett maybe been, has been the, the standout of that group. Yeah, he's definitely left his mark in this game, too. Almost took over a whole series on his own and making back-to-back, -back, you know, tackles for loss, and it's another big play there. The officials coming to the monitor. A challenge flag apparently thrown, and the officials are looking at things. Nima. Looked like the Bucks were ready to go, but wait, uh, we don't have the officials yet. Trying to strike while the Barnstormers weren't paying attention. Yes. Fourth and goal. It's a must-score situation for, for Bismarck. Let's see what Jim Wojohowicz comes up with here for a call. The ruling on the field was an incomplete pass. Please reset the game clock to 46 seconds. 46. Okay, incomplete pass. They're going to put 10 more seconds on the clock from 36 back up to 46. The time not a factor right now. This play is the factor. The Bucks have to get to the goal line. They have to score on this play. Fourth and goal. Allen takes the run, looks to throw, throws to the end zone, and it is caught at a terrific grab in the end zone. Oh, what a catch. And it's down to a two-point differential, a two-point conversion try coming up for Bismarck. Oh, what a grab that was. It's a great grab. I mean, great. It's a great job of extending the play there by Allen, stepping up in the pocket, forcing the linebackers to kind of press up towards him, obviously, so he doesn't get open, and he delivers a strike there to Harvey. Their magical Raheem Harvey coming back to haunt his ex-team. Those are the guys that usually play the best. 
And for Raheem Harvey, the former barnstormer, on that scrimmage when he threw the forward pass. And you heard the call there from Jim Wojohowicz. So the quarterback was over the line of scrimmage when he threw. And again, that is going to be challenged to make sure that's true. So if that were true, then take away the touchdown. And it'll be fourth down and even longer. Raheem Harvey has already caught two touchdown passes. One was a terrific hit. That one was as well. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The result of the play is a touchdown. The quarterback was not across the line of so scrimmage. He did not cross the line of scrimmage. I was so the second challenge, and they are charged confirmed. their second time out. So it is 41-39. Harvey with a 12-yard touchdown reception from Allen. And now the two-point conversion to tie it up with 39 seconds left. What a catch that was by Harvey. He's made two great catches tonight. I mean, that's a great toss, too, there. And that tight coverage and that tight window. And John McClure right on top of him. Yeah, absolutely. There was really nowhere to throw that ball, but uh, he makes a great play on the ball there for him. Harvey does and comes down with it. Take a guess. What do the Bucks try to call here? Oh, man. Some sort of... Uh, it's, I, they're gonna, it's gonna be a pass play, and I'm, I'm betting they go to uh, Harvey again. He's been Mr. Dependable. He's gotten open, but Allen sees an opening, now throws, and makes probably a bad decision. He looked like he could have run it into the end zone, didn't he? I think so, but there was a hold in the end zone, and he was going for Harvey. He saw Strayhorn there at the last moment and short armed the throw, but now let's see what the call is. Number 21 on the defense. Half the Barnstormers hold, which means Bismarck's going to get another Half chance. Yeah, I mean, they were they were really afraid there, Harvey coming free, and rightfully so. <laughs> yeah. Because Harvey just right about came so. free there, and they're definitely been wide open. Nice little pick play. Oh, pretty yeah. obvious, huh? Yeah. That's one you can't uh, <laughs> you can't deny there by Cromwell. Tyrone Cromwell on the hold. Yeah, but Harvey was kind of running free on a crossing pattern. It looked like he could have been open. He was. Yeah, I mean, he's been their go-to guy so far. And now a uh, timeout will be taken by the Barnstormers, I'm going to assume. Bismarck. Nope, Bismarck. And they wanted to make sure they had the play called right. So they will use the timeout. We talk about a game going down to the final minute. This is definitely that. Absolutely. Bismarck has a very, very heavy package in right now, too. You got to you know they got one of their D linemen in right now. and Trying to load up the box and run it in. Massachusetts won tonight, going to 9-3. and three. Green Bay lost, going to 5-7. and seven. So that shows you why this is important for the Barnstormers. Top eight teams qualify for the playoffs. Right now, I was in ninth place, but a chance to move up and actually would go up above all those five and six teams because it's on winning percentage. It would go to 500. And again, an uh, uneven number of games played because Louisville dropped from the league at mid-season. But meanwhile, more importantly, this two-point conversion. Allen now just a short distance, hands it off to Rankin. Rankin is going to be stopped. I don't think he got in. Maybe he got in on second effort. Let's see if he did. Have we had the signal yet? The officials want to take a close look. He did signal two-point conversion. Well, that was great second effort by Rankin to get in there. And with that, the game is tied at 41. That was a great hard run. I mean, they loaded it up heavy, and the Barnstormers, get, they get him at about the two-yard line, but look at that. He He's slides tried. away, doesn't he? Loses the football if he hits the goal line, but did cross it. Did get across the plane to tie it at 41. How about that? Yeah. Wow, that's a, I mean, that's a, <laughs> that's sheer determination there by Rankin. How fitting would it be for Barnstorm to set up Gabe Rui for a game-winning field goal here. This would game. be quite fitting, absolutely. 
So Rankin gets the two-point conversion. The game's tied to 41. 39 seconds left in regulation. Both teams have two timeouts remaining. Remember, there's still the deuce. If the kickoff by Barber should split the uprights, that would give Bismarck two points. And you don't know what's going to happen to Iowa on offense. So that two point could be a factor. You never and know. Maybe not a factor. But again, it would have to split the uprights on the kickoff for the deuce to come into effect, which is just in the last minute of the half and the last minute of the game. But stranger things have happened. Strange things have happened throughout this game. So who knows what's next? You never know. I know this is a good game, and at least the fans and the people at home watching are, are really getting a good one. Barnstormers don't mathematically fall out of the playoff picture with a loss, but with two games remaining, it would certainly be very, very costly. Iowa's got Sioux Falls at home next Saturday. They finish at Massachusetts, the hottest team in the league. Winners of six in a row after, last, after tonight's victory. Jawan Williams is back to return. The kick by Cody Barber. And it's not going to be a deuce, and Williams does have a return. And he's tripped up inside the 10-yard line. That was a good special team play by Bismarck at a very crucial time. Yeah, special teams was flying down there. He's taking another peek here. I mean, you know, this is a game of inches. And Rankin keeps those legs turning and reaches over the goal line to secure that extra two points for his team. Really looked like they'd contained him prior to that in squirming away. They really did. They had him wrapped up, but, you know, lower center of gravity always wins. Justin Rankin, 5'9", 215, lower center of gravity indeed. So the game tied at 41. Barnstormers obviously would like to get in at least a Rui field goal spot to wrap this one up in regulation. Kirk Kelly ready to snap the ball. Neal with time, floats, looking for Thompson. Great one-handed catch at the 20-yard line. And he's out of bounds at the 16. A one-handed grab by Carrington Thompson Sr. Wow, what a catch by Thompson Sr. Wow. I mean, Neal just lays it out there for him, and Thompson runs right underneath the one-handed. No assistance. That's a great catch. So excited to be playing in front of his six-year-old son, Carrington Thompson Jr., and he makes a great grab there. So the Barnstorm is now in Rui field goal position. High snap from center. Neal throws to the near sideline and really threw it away. Had Williams in the vicinity, but just trying to get rid of it. Bad exchange, and there's no reason to be anything but cautious here. Absolutely. Yeah, that snap was kind of high, and <laughs> uh, it kind of hung up in the air a little bit there. It looks like the snap might have got touched by the lineman somewhere, but was able to secure it and get it out of bounds. So it is second down and 10 at the 16-yard line. 24 seconds left in regulation. Both teams, two timeouts remaining. Jawan Williams wide to the right side. Two wide receivers in motion to the right. Low snap from center. Neal picks it up, throws to the end zone, and it's caught by Thompson for a touchdown. Carrington Thompson Sr. holds it in, and the Barnstormers have the lead with 19 seconds to play. It's a great drive there by Thompson. I mean, the Barnstormers as a whole, but Thompson made two really good catches here tonight. I mean, Neal throws a strike to him, and he comes up with it. You tend to forget about the drops when you make catches like that when they really matter. Absolutely. I was just about to say, how about that throw by Neal? Oh, man, he put that on the window, on a dime. 47-41 Iowa. Rui on to attempt the point after. It is up, and it is good. And with 19 seconds to play, the Barnstormers have a 48-41 lead over Bismarck. Bismarck, 19 seconds, two timeouts remaining to try to change that. It's getting a little chippy down there. Got a flag thrown for after the after the play activities. And regardless of what team it's against. After the play, personal foul, number 32 on Bismarck. That penalty will be put in the bank and assessed on the first play from scrimmage after the kickoff. 
So definitely not a wise play at that point in the game. Great throw by Neal. What a catch by Thompson. That's I mean, Neal shows his arm strength, puts it only where Thompson can make the catch, and Thompson does just that, goes and makes another great catch to help seal the game, possibly. Dequan Neal coming off a performance a couple of weeks ago against Green Bay where Barnstormers put only 20 points on the board until the final play. And it was a really lackluster performance. Well, he has bounced back. His team has bounced back. And now, if they can just hold off the Bucks from the end zone for another 19 seconds, they can put an end to a five-game losing streak and reach the 500 mark. Carrington Thompson Sr., great one-handed grab to set it up, and then a terrific touchdown catch. Yeah, we just, like I said earlier, man, you make catches like that, like he made right there. Forget about those two drops early in the game. They were like the first two balls thrown to him in the game, and since then, it's been a different story. That was Thompson's first touchdown catch of the night. But wow, what a catch to set it up. A three-play, 41-yard drive. Rui with a kick and hits a lineman as recovered by Iowa. He was just trying to kick it low so it couldn't be returned long. As it turned out, couldn't have happened better. Wow. Uh, that ball has been bouncing the barns on his way all night tonight. And they walked away with another one. And that should pretty much seal that deal. You couldn't draw a play up like that. What happened was, again, a low kick, and it hit one of the up linemen for the Bucks. And the ball was designed, of course, just to stay on the ground. Let's get another look. I, mean, I don't even think that was part of the plan, but he kicked it right there, and that lineman retreated just enough, and it caught him. And who's there? Jalen Moore, as he's been all night to recover it. Absolutely. He's been all over the field, too. The defense has played a very, very good game tonight. They certainly have. You say they give up 41 points. Could that be true? Well, in fact, it is true. And, of course, with that penalty called against Darian Jackson on the touchdown earlier that was in the bank, this ball gets moved up to Bismarck the territory the up to the 24-yard line. By the kicking team, Bismarck is challenging that the kicking team was offside. If you could read lips, you know what Jim Wojciechowicz just said. Mm. But the music hadn't stopped, and so nobody actually got to hear what he said. <laughs> Too much excitement in this Probably place. just explaining that was the penalty in the bank. That's probably what the explanation was. Well, now I take that back because he's going to look at something. Replay monitor's got to work out here in the last five minutes, Brent. Yeah, that's surprising. But it's good to know it works, so hey. Yeah, that's true. Like they're checking to see if anybody was offside. That's what the officials are looking at. That's what you are seeing. Look at the very top of your screen. Nope. I don't think so. No, I think that's a good ball. Just got to double check and confirm everything. Bismarck isn't going to let anything slide either. After review, the kicking team was not offside. The result of the play is the kicking team recovered the ball. First down. So it is all over if the Barnstormers can secure the football for 15 seconds. And of course, you have to have positive yardage in the final minute just to keep the clock running. Bismarck does have a timeout left if they choose to use it. So there's positive yardage by Neal. And Bismarck can stop the clock one more time if they wish, and they apparently wish. So they're out of timeouts now. We've got 11 seconds to play, and then the Barnstormers will celebrate a hard-fought victory and end to a losing streak and getting to the 500 mark and getting themselves right back in the playoff picture. Yeah, it's about getting hot at the right time. And they came out tonight actually ready to play the ball game, and they come out ready to play. They're a totally different team. Les Moss continuing to coach his team and say, let's keep our poise now. We got one more play to go. 
So again, next Saturday night, 7.05, right here at Wells Fargo Arena, rematch with Sioux Falls, third meeting of the year. Playoff implications Bismarck on the line used, for both. Bismarck used their final timeout to challenge that the kicking team was offside. The result of the play was a live ball. That is the end of the game. Ball game. So the ball game is over, as it was explained. Unfortunately, we couldn't hear it. It was explained by Jim Wojciechowicz, and the Barnstormers win it by a score of 48-41. That was a frantic finish. Iowa took an 11-point lead into the third, into the fourth quarter. There was a missed field goal. Late in the third, there was a fumble that Iowa overcomes some adversity and wins tonight 48-41. They did. They had each other's back tonight all night, and it, it was good to see. They came out ready to play and had a game plan in, in place, and they executed that game plan tonight. Walked away with a win. And there's a guy who didn't play, but let's give him a little bit of credit, too. Richard Stametti had been a Bismarck quarterback until a couple of weeks ago when they brought in Allen and they thought and Lewis was there also at quarterback and he's the one who ran the scout team against his former uh, uh, run the scout team knowing the plays of Bismarck so well and Stanetti must have had something to do with his victory even though he didn't play it down right he definitely helped the defense prepare you know we always need defense side of the ball you always need a good look team and no better uh, person to get a look from than the guy that was just there recently so and meanwhile the Iowa quarterback walks off the field having secured himself a very fine night and a big Iowa victory. Final score, Iowa 48-41, and we'll be right back. vacation destination Okaboji. Catch Okaboji this week all summer long and it's only on MC22. Each year, one in six Americans get sick due to a foodborne illness. People can get food poisoning from eating hot food that isn't kept hot, cold food that isn't kept cold, or old food that should be thrown out. If you get sick from eating food made outside your home, report that illness by calling 844-IOWA-SICK. Feeling queasy? Call. It's easy. 844-IOWA-SIC. 844-IOWA-SICK. Finish for the Barnstormers. They hold off Bismarck to win it 48 to 41. You're looking right there at Carrington Thompson Sr. And he had a big game tonight. In fact, let's take a look at our play of the game because it was the one that set up the touchdown that he scored. Look at this catch. Yeah, I mean, you couldn't draw this up any better. I mean, Daquan puts a great ball out there for him, but the catch at the end of that just sticks his glove out and it just sticks to it like he had to stick him on it. That the play of the game, and again, one more look at it. This subsequently led to a Thompson touchdown. He winds up with a game-winning touchdown, but that, that catch really secured that. Now, our player of the game, let's go to the defensive side. Oh, goodness, Tony Jones had his name all over this ball game. He was flying all over the place. Uh, he wasn't letting a soul go if he got his hand on him, but breaking up on balls, making good tackles, and, you know, started the game off with a big sack, strip fumble recovery for a touchdown. So he really set the tone for the Barnstormers for their defensive side of the ball, and they follow suit, and the rest is history. I thought in their loss two weeks ago, the offensive and defensive lines probably let the Barnstormers down. Conversely tonight, I thought they were both, both sides of the ball very effective. I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, the guys came ready to play. 
Um, a lot more energy, a lot more intensity tonight, and he showed up on the field. And Daquan Neal, again, had a tough outing last time out against Bismarck. Tough outing two weeks ago, but he certainly acquitted himself well tonight. Yeah, yeah, he played a very efficient game. Uh, I think the opening up the run a lot helped with the pass today. So uh, he came locked in, ready to go to, and whenever your quarterback and leader is in a zone or in a position to, you know, Stay positive and keep you guys moving forward. That always helps your team. So next Saturday, Sioux Falls comes to town. How many times have Iowa and Sioux Falls met where the game meant something? Oh, goodness. Uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of few and far in between. I think in the last couple of years they have met a couple of times. But, I mean, this one is going to be another one of those times that might go down in the books. Absolutely. It's the last regular season home game for the Barnstormers. So try to get out and see it in person as... Carrington Thompson Sr. celebrates with Carrington Thompson Jr. Again, the final score on this first responders night, Iowa 48, Bismarck 41. Again, our next telecast one week from tonight. It's a big one with plenty of playoff implications for both squads. Sioux Falls at Iowa, that comes up next Saturday night. Hope you'll join us then. Coverage of Barnstormers Indoor Football on MC22 is an exclusive production of Mediacom in Des Moines. MC22 is your award-winning local sports programming leader. you share with your best friend the greatest could be the moment you save her life every second counts in cardiac arrest learn hands only CPR and be the difference for someone you love while a lot is changing in our world at Mediacom our focus remains the same making sure you have the fastest most reliable connection possible during this critical time we know your needs are changing you may be working or learning from home, relying on telemedicine, or finding new ways to keep everyone entertained. If you need more speed, call or go online, and Mediacom will double your speed immediately for as low as $10 more a month for one year. Tweet at Iowa's number one vacation destination, Okaboji. this week all summer long and it's only on MC 22 Instead, it's gonna be a one point gain for Trey Birchfield they're saying waiting to see who she'll play next nine to four Duncan Clemmer three-point swing right Trey I mean, yes. could have been plus two for Clemmer instead now down by five I will say it looks like, just from my estimation, that Birchfield's bags are...